we present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross, and Diana Day in... Penny Foolish! So the postman said to me, I don't know what your sister sees in that daft Alfie hall. I said, I'll tell you what she sees in him. He's handsome and strong, and he loves dumb animals, especially our Susan. <laughs> yes, well, can I go in the house now? It's drafty in this coal shed. I said, he's good and kind. He'd do anything for anybody, Alfie would. Hold this shovel full of coal, would you, Alfie? Yeah, yeah oh, all right. Yeah, now can we go in? So the postman said, Luke, Jimmy, I'll lend you a shilling. I said, no, that's dear, kind Alfie's job. He'd never forgive me if I borrowed off somebody else. <laughs> Look, you've had your weekly shilling off me last Saturday. Another one and sixpence on Monday night. You're getting no more. Ah, here you are. So you can find another mug. Try your granddad. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon, Alfie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Sinclair. I thought you were bringing in some coal, Jimmy. The fire's nearly out. I I've got the coal, Mr. Sinclair. Well, would you mind bringing it into the house instead of standing here gassing while we're freezing in the living room? I'm sorry, Mr. Sinclair, but he started it all when I called to see me dumb animal. My girlfriend, I mean, <laughs> Susan. He shouted to me to come into the coal shed and like a fool, I came in. So you see, Mrs. Pedro, it was a lot of flannel to borrow money off me. It was all a pack of lies. Ignore him, Alfie. Come and sit by the fire. What there is of it. Oh, time, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, it is cold today. The rain is going to snow, but it'll soon burn up now you've put some on. Cold, I mean, not snow. <laughs> <laughs> My dad said we were in for it when he tapped the barometer and it fell off the nail. Would anybody like a cough toffee? <laughs> Who said the art of good conversation was dead? <laughs> you shut up. And don't you dare try to borrow any more money off Alfie. You'd better not try and borrow off anybody. I'm sick and tired of being pestered for money. Well, try a fresh pub. What was that? <laughs> I, said, I said I'd let you have a sub if I had any money. Oh, honest, I'm always skint. Do you think January is too early to start collecting for Guy Fawkes? <laughs> you can stop being funny. You've been warned no one is lending you any more money. All right, scraggy neck. I'll sell something. I'll go to that old junk shop in Fraser Street. What are you going to sell? I don't know, but there must be something useless around the house that we could do without. Oh, of course. Get your coat on, Susan. <laughs> You're going for a tattoo. <laughs> Here we are. Charlie Wheeler, the old junk dealer. I buy anything. Best prices paid. Spot cash, no fuss. Right, here we go. Oh, it's dark in here. Shop! Anybody in? It's as dark as Aladdin's cave in the pantomime. I'll be with you in a minute. Go, go away. It is Aladdin's cave. <laughs> That's Abenaza. <laughs> now, where's that envelope with Miss Stamps in? Oh, here we are. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I was just dusting the cat. Oh, well, um, I wanted... Did you say you were dusting the moggy? Uh, yes, uh, she's stuffed. And uh, if I don't dust her regularly, the moths get at her. <coughs> I don't suppose you'd like to give her a good home, young man? Oh, well, it wouldn't cost much to feed her. What am I talking about? <laughs> Listen, Mr. Moggy Flogger. <laughs> How much will you give me for these foreign stamps? Oh, well, uh, not much, son. Uh, unless you come across a rare one, there's not much of a living to be made out of foreign stamps. Or, as the joke has it, philately will get you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, very funny. I like that. Do you really? <laughs> no, but I need the money. <laughs> Go on, there's 50 stamps there. Make me an offer. Well, I, I can't see them very well in this light. Good. I mean, uh, they're very good. All genuine ones. Penny blacks and Rhode Island reds. Yeah. <laughs> they're hens, aren't they? Don't be daft. Who ever heard of a hen called a penny black? Oh, well, well, that's <laughs> right. Now, I'll just turn the light on now and uh, let me see. Hey, hey, hey. How much do you expect to get for this lot? Uh, a pound? A pound? Well, uh, five bob then. Hang on, I've seen these stamps before. Now, uh, uh, Half a uh, crown uh, and you're getting uh, a bargain. Uh, uh, wait a minute. 
I think I remember now. Do, Bob, and I'll clean your windows for nothing. I've, I've got it. Aye, me grandson Clive. He got these for nothing with a boy's magazine. A shilling, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, they're worthless, these things. I'll tell you what, son. You go away, fold each stamp up, tear it into halves, and then quarters, and then eights. Bring them back, and I'll buy them off you for tuppence for confetti. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something in my pocket you might like to buy. Oh, I want all the rare treasures of you to delight my eyes. Oh, where is it? Oh, yes, it's mixed up with all my money. <laughs> oh, threaten save me of it. <laughs> Here it is. A genuine antique, full of history and romance. It's been all over the world. Only one previous owner. What is it? My granddad's good conduct medal. <laughs> he won it in the first war. Clear off. Just take these pennies of yours. Hello. What have we? That's a penny. I know. I'll give you five bob for it. Five bob for a penny? Ah, oh, well, it's an auntie. Fifty penny. They didn't make many that year. That's why it's worth five shillings. Get away. Oh, and in 1951, it's worth 25 bob. Oh, let me see. Oh, what a pity I haven't got one. Fancy that. I must look out for a 1951 penny. <laughs> you want to look out for a 1933 penny? Why, how much is that worth? A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds? <laughs> For a penny? That's nearly as good as the football pools. Oh, they, they, they say that's a value because only six were supposed to be made and they've all been found. But who knows? A thousand pounds? Just for finding a penny with 1933 stamped on it. Oh, and from what I've seen of you, if there's one floating about in this town, you'll find it. <laughs> well, I'm going to try. It's a terrible thought, though. Some dear old lady could have one and not know what it's worth. And she'd spend a penny worth a thousand pounds. <laughs> just to get weighed. <laughs> Son, are you feeling all right? Never felt better, Grandad. I'm telling you, I'll run all your errands for nothing. And you say that includes my shopping? That's right, Mum. <coughs> Have you fetch my pal notion for me? Oh, with pleasure, Susan, dear. Now, let me see. I've to bring me back my Grandad's pension. That's four pounds. My Mum's change will be about 18 bob. Then the Susan's change, three bob at least. That's 18 and 21. That's 101 shillings. Times 12, that's, uh, 12 times 100 is, uh... J -j Jimmy, what is all this? Uh, nothing, ma'am. Uh... Now, don't forget to give him my note when you get to the post office so you can collect my pension. The post office, of course. Them stamp machines must, must be full of pennies. What is going on? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. Well, I'll go and get the bus. The bus? The conductor's cash bag. he will have tons of them. Every time it rains, it rains, pennies from heaven. 1956, 1923, 1895. Oh, come on, let's have a winner. 1961. Hey, up, this is it. Oh, no. 1932. Just one year out. Hey, if I scratch the two with a pinna. <laughs> you have all the rotten look, not one, not even a rotten five bob one. Oh, there you are. Is this my perming lotion here? Open it, look for yourself, scraggy neck. <laughs> All right, keep calm. I'll have my change before I forget. Here it is, three bob, coming over. Oh, what's all this? These are all pennies. Brilliant! That 12 years you spent at school wasn't wasted. <laughs> look, Mother and Grandad have just popped next door to see Mrs. Butterworth, and when they get back, I'll tell them. Oh, oh you're back, Jimmy. Uh, yes, Mum, your flowers in the kitchen. Um, here's your change. What on earth is all that? 18 piles of pennies, a shilling a pile. <laughs> oh, Jim's back then. Did, yeah. did you get my pension, son? Uh, yes, here it is, Grandad. What's in that bag? Your pension, four pounds. <laughs> or if you're good at sums, 960 pennies. What? Now, before you all say anything, I can explain. I'm trying to find valuable pennies to make me fortune. Um, our fortunes. 
So I asked for me change in pennies, because there might be a 1933 amongst them, or perhaps just a 1951. I'm not greedy. All right, Jimmy. Do you know... Get rid of them. I've looked at so many pennies, Britannia's driving me crazy. <laughs> what, ma'am? Pennies to the bank and change them. Five one-pound notes and a shilling piece. Go on. Arcade? No, no, there's my pal Albert down the end. Oh, good. Uh, can I have 12 pennies for this shilling, please? Yeah, certainly, son. Here you are. Having a go on the machines, are you? I, um, thought I'd just give myself a game of emptying the baby's bottles. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll find that one round right here by the pin table. Right, mister. Let me see. 1899, 1954, 1905, oh, heck not a sausage. Well, better look next time. Excuse me, mister. Yes, honey? Can you give me a shilling for these 12 pennies? Yes, here you are. Thanks, mister. You're welcome. Right, here we go again, Jim. <laughs> Excuse me, mister. Oh, it's you again, Sonny. Yes, can I have another 12 pennies, please, for this shilling? You got through the hours a bit sharpish, didn't you? Oh, I'm like that when I get going. Money's no object. <laughs> Sometimes I have four separate games of football going all at the same time. Well, hey, are then. Don't forget already. You're keen. Yeah, keen to win a thousand quid. Now, let me see what I've got in this lot. 1922, 1912. Yeah, well, you're certainly on a winning streak today, my lad. This is the tenth lot of coppers I've changed into a shilling for you. Here, um, where are you getting them all from? I can tell you that. It's getting them from me. Eh? Oh, heck, another ten minutes and I'd have emptied his bag. <laughs> I'll be watching this, lad, Albert. As fast as I've changed this shilling into copper, you've changed them back into shillings. Yeah, what's the idea, Sam? Well, um... I'm... You, uh, you wouldn't be checking the date to see if they're valuable, would you? Me? <laughs> what an idea. Because I... you'd be wasting your time. It's the first thing me and Albert do every morning. <laughs> properly before you put your pyjamas on and then come down for your hot milk. All right, Mum. I know. The times I have to wash, it's a wonder I don't go soggy. <laughs> Never mind the jokes. Just do as you're told. Why do boys hate water, I wonder? 1924, 35, 43, 1964. Oh, Father, don't tell me you've caught the collecting bug. <laughs> oh, well, well, I was just looking at the pennies I had in my pocket. <laughs> I'm getting as bad as my grandson. Oh, no, nobody's as bad as him. I think he's been through every penny in the town by now. Did Susan tell you what they said at the bank? <laughs> Jimmy changed pennies into pounds and back to pennies. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Susan. We were just talking about Jimmy's carry-on at the bank. What the cashier told you. Well, that's nothing to what Alfie told me. Oh? Is Alfie in the hall? No, he's gone home to have an early night. He needs it after being out with that delinquent brother of mine. Well, what's he been up to now? Oh, this penny business. Alfie bought an evening paper when they were out and he put the money in a little tin box. Beside the newspapers, the newspaper seller was away for a minute. Well, what happened? My brother thought one of Alfie's pennies was a 1950, or whatever it is. So he tipped out all the pennies over the papers and started going through them all. The newspaper seller came up and smacked him for trying to steal his money. Alfie pushed the man, and they were just starting to fight when a policeman came along and stopped them. <laughs> Trust the police to interfere with a man's pleasure. It's not funny, Father. <laughs> You know, this has got to stop. Jimmy's going too far with this business. Oh, don't you worry. It's going to stop. By a lucky coincidence, I've come across something that should cure that limp of this penny nonsense. Well, what do you mean? I've got a little plan that I fixed with Alfie. You see, Alfie found a penny in his change tonight, and... Okay. Alfie found a penny? What date? 50 or 51? Oh, uh, I'm not sure, but I'm almost certain it was one of the dates you were looking for. Oh, does he know what it's worth? Well, he said it's worth nothing. 
I told him he was wrong, but he insisted it was worthless. Where is he? He's gone home. He should be there by now. I've been talking to Mary Carter for a quarter of an hour since he left me. Well, I'll just pop round and see him before he goes to bed. You'll do nothing of the kind. You're ready for your own bed. It won't take me a minute to change and I'll nip round on my bike. You're not going out at this time of night. Anyway, it's snowing outside. Well, you don't expect it to snow inside, do you? <laughs> All right, I'll phone him. You know off his number, don't you? Of course I do. I dial in for nut. <laughs> Is the snow coming down now, Sue? Well, it would hardly be snowing up, could it? Why not? It snows up in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, hello, who's that? Alfie Hall. Oh, yeah, that's funny. I'm Alfie Hall as well. <laughs> you think it, it's me? Who's that? This is the Missing Persons Bureau. I have a message for you. Oh, what is it? Get lost. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, oh, it's Jimmy Troublemaker, is it? Yeah, that's right, your best friend. Listen, Alfie, uh, we've been playing a guessing game here and uh, I want you to help us. How do you mean? Well, have you any pennies in your pocket? Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, I have. Well, take them out and read out the dates. What well, for? It's a game. We all had bets on what dates will come up. Go on. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, um, I've got six pennies. Uh, 1925, yeah. mm. 30, 1918. Oh, hey, that was when the first war started. <laughs> Never mind the history lesson. Get on with it. Yeah. 1933, 57, 19... 'em so I'll get them for him. Just you bring the six pennies here tomorrow morning, I'll give you a nice shiny shilling for yourself. Oh, well, all right, but I think you're daft. I know, but this lad would like them, and you know how soft hearted I am. <laughs> no, I didn't. Anyway, I'll bring them. Good lad, Alfie. See you in the morning. Ta-ra! Not worth anything. <laughs> 1933, only 1,000 smackers. <laughs> thousand pounds. I'll buy my own rocket ship, a cowboy horse, a ton and a half of whipped cream walnuts. I'm going to teach you to do me homework. I'll get the others something as well. A diamond ring for my mum, a kookery boot for Susan, and a central heated kilt for my granddad. <laughs> sleep tonight. Oh, I should have got that penny off Alfie pajamas, you know. Anything could happen to it before tomorrow morning. Oh, it's liable to put it out for the milkman. Oh, oh I hope their gas meter doesn't take pennies. Jim, I didn't know my man was sending me trousers to the cleaners with a penny in the pocket. If I don't get it, I'll send your head to the cleaners to have your brain starched. <laughs> It'll be all right. Just go to the Chinese laundry. Very sorry. On the bus, you make a mistake. He, a Chinese twit. <laughs> He's no good being sorry. Where's Alfie's trousers? Mr. Lebelofspling gave trousers to Colonel Bogey. Well, where can I find him? Oh, uh, he go on expedition to North Pole. What? Well, I'll have to go after him. Oh, when uh, you come back, could you bring me a nice lolly? <laughs> Why don't you go and see a doctor? Uh, why? Tell him you're out of your little Chinese mind. <laughs> It's cold up here. Now, where's the blooming pole? Ah, oh, here's an Eskimo, I'll ask him. Hey, 
Mr. Eskimo, is this the North Pole? No, sir, this here is the South Pole. But when our hero reached the North Pole, he found the penny had been taken by Signor Caparati to Rome. Ah, oh, that's all right. Well, can I have the penny you got at the North Pole, please? Oh, not on your anelli. It's on my good luck piece, huh? Hey, you, stand back from the fountain. One, a two... Hey! And a three. What are you doing? Three coins in the fountain. Hey, up, you organ grinder. Again, our hero was too late. The penny had gone to Australia. Oh, come on, come on, let's get this test match started. I'm afraid we can't, old boy, because we can't toss up. Some dashed boy has stolen the penny. <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> They'll never find me in here. <laughs> Hiding in this kangaroo's pouch. <laughs> <laughs> They'll think I'm an advert for BBC too. <laughs> Jimmy, will you sit down and finish your breakfast? I have finished. I'll eat this toast and then we're on to Alfred. Stop talking with your mouthful and sit down and eat your meal. Well, I only want toast. Oh, but there's bacon and egg. I've cooked it. That's why I only want toast. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the bacon and egg. I enjoyed it. Well, you'd enjoy... Um, it's not served the right way. Oh, and how should it be served, my lord? On a silver dish? When you cook it, it should be served in a trough. <laughs> One more word from you, my lad, and you'll feel the weight of my hand. Don't bother, Grandad. My turn will come, maybe sooner than he thinks. Jimmy, just get it into your head that you are not going round to Alfie's, disturbing his mother and father... So whether you eat or not makes no difference. Oh, all right. Pass the bacon and egg, then, Strike. Susan. Isn't that a word you've forgotten? Oh, yes. Pass the bacon and egg and the stomach powder. What? <laughs> it's all right, Mother. He can't upset me today. That's him. He's here with me fortune. <laughs> Good luck, I mean. Uh, I'll let him in. Yeah, I haven't finished your... Oh, what the... A thousand lovely pounds. Oh, steady, Jim. <laughs> We don't want him to get suspicious till I've bought it. Play it cool, boy. Yeah, hello, Jim. Ah, the snow's thick outside. My toes are numb. Have you got them, the six of them? There's ten, five on each foot. No. <laughs> the, the, the pennies, you mean. You're anxious, aren't you? Anxious? Pennies? I don't know what you mean. Come in. Oh, dear. I mean, the, the pennies you asked me to bring. Oh, uh, those pennies... I'd forgotten all about them. Oh, yeah, well, if you'll move, I'll go into the room and say hello. Here's your shilling and them over. All right. Uh, thank you. Yeah, there you are. One, two, three, four, five. 1925, 1830, 57, 60. Where's the other one? Where is it? <laughs> oh, that <well>, was silly. <laughs> I took them out to count them and I started flipping one and catching it and then I didn't. Didn't what? Catch it. <laughs> it flew off and landed in the snow. You dozy Luke and your great steaming. That was the 1933 one. Oh, yes, that's right. Hey, fancy you remembering. I only said it once. Where? Where? Do you remember where it was? In our house. It fell in the snow in your house. <laughs> Has the roof blown off? Oh, that's where I told you what the date was in our house. I was. You're talking, not flipping it. That, that was on your path. You dropped it on our path. Are you sure? Certain, I think. But, I mean, I, I was on the path when I flipped. You flipped when you were born. <laughs> well, which way did the penny go when you spun it up? It went up. And then it came down somewhere. I mean, <coughs> it must be on your path of the garden. Why didn't you look for it? Dig it up? What, for a penny? Anyway, if you're annoyed, I'll give you tuppence, James. That'll be ten pence you paid for five. Oh, no, they're all mine. I've paid you. And when I dig up that 1933 one, that's mine. Out of my way. Hello, where are you dashing? Uh, I'm going to clear the snow from the path. You what? How much for? A penny. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Alfie. 
Jimmy, you're working cheap, aren't you? Oh, belt up. Where's the spade, Grandad? In the shed? Aye, get both of them and I'll give you a hand. Oh, no, you won't. I mean, uh, it's too hard for you. You lumbago. <laughs> I'll do it myself. I'm young and strong. And greedy. <laughs> well, Alfie, it worked. The fish took the worm. Hey, <laughs> it, it did. <laughs> what worm? Oh, me, I'm the worm, <laughs> yeah. The, the fish was too big for his boots and he's caught his head in his own trap and burnt his fingers. <laughs> Alfie, what on earth are you talking about? Oh, Susan, Jimmy's been out there for over an hour. You'll have to bring him in. He must be frozen. No, oh, all right. But he's not cold. You can see the perspiration on his face from here. Well, he's finished the path anyway. Hey, hey, look, he's going to start on next door's front. <laughs> Oh, you've had the coin on you all the time. <laughs> yeah, in my trousers turn up. <laughs> yeah, that was Susan's plan. Oh, you're a cruel pair. Where is he? She, so you've had the blooming thing all the time. I've been digging. Yeah, I, I found it in my turn up. He, he can't have fallen in the snow. Here. Anyway, I don't know what all the fuss is about. I told you it's not worth anything. You said it was 1933. Give it to you. It is 1933, there. Yes, it is. <laughs> 1933. Alfie, you clot. <laughs> this is worth a thousand pounds. Do you hear that? A thousand pounds. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe it. Well, it's true, and you're getting nothing out of it. <laughs> now, look. 1933. 1933. See, look. I can't see. 1933. It's written under the R. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hop. Yeah. It's a 1933 Irish penny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This worth nothing. That's what I told you. Ever been had, brother? I've been framed, twisted. I've cleared all that snow for nothing. <laughs> been taken for a ride by Daft Alfiol. I'm going round to see my pal Ozzy. You'll get no sympathy from Ozzy. I don't want sympathy. The way I feel, I want somebody to hit. Oh. And you're all too big. <laughs> Those involved with the Clitheroe kit this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan, with Brian Truman and John Graham as all the other voices. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. Well, that's me finished with pennies. I wore myself out for nothing. Well, for an Irish penny. Still, I got me own back on Alfie. I wrapped it in silver paper, rubbed it on my leg for half an hour, and the next day he changed it for me for a shilling and two sixpences. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross, and Diana Day in. Watch the birdie! Jimmy, will you stop pestering me about the camera competition and evening paper? It's for children, so if you want to get on with it, do it yourself. Well, I only want an idea to start me off with the poem. Look. You've got to write a poem entitled Why I Like Reading the Children's Page. How can I help? I don't read that nonsense. You what? When Sammy the Snail got lost, you went off your food for a week. <laughs> now, don't be stupid, Jimmy. Look, I'm trying to sort out the accounts for the bowling club. The committee has to approve them tomorrow. Oh, in that case, you better emigrate tonight. <laughs> Look, I'll help you with your sums if you'll help me with my poem. I'll have all the help I need when old Charlie Wheeler arrives. He's coming to give me a hand. Charlie Wheeler? The bloke with the junk shop? He's too old to do sums. When he was a lad, the school bus was a Roman chariot. <laughs> he's, he's even older than you. Oh, thank you very much. 
Charlie still manages to play a good game of bowls. Oh, well, he's had plenty of practice. He was the one who beat Francis Drake on Plymouth Hall. <laughs> oh, he is daft. He can't speak proper. Oh, oh you can talk, huh? Look, Charlie just gets his words mixed up sometimes, that's all. You're not kidding. I remember him talking to the vicar one Sunday and he said, um, Is this the second or the third Sunday after Pontefract? <laughs> well, he knows how to deal with accounts anyway. Oh, that'll be in the, uh, the door now. Let, let him in. Oh, uh, right, Grandad. Uh, I'll tell him you're waiting for his uh, insistence. Now, never mind the cheat. Just bring him into the living room. Hello, Mr. Wheeler. Oh, hello, young man. I've come for your granddad. You'll never sell him in your junk shop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're a caution, you are. Always coming out with your witticalisms. <laughs> uh, go in, my granddad's waiting for you in the loving room. <laughs> I'm in here, Charlie. Come away in and sit down by the fire. Oh, thanks, Peter. It is a bit cold for me old bones. It's, it's me legs, you know. They get them romantic pains. <laughs> yes, and according to the wireless, the temperature's dropped to four degrees centipede. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, that'll do. <laughs> well, I've uh, got the books here, Charlie. We'll just have a wee glance at them while we're waiting. For opening time. <laughs> For your mother to get back. Look, just sit quiet and write your poem. Oh, are you, are you writing poems? I love a bit of poetry. When I were a lad, I were always reading great poets. Uh, Keat, Shelley's, Longfellow. Uh, mind you, I never understood modern ones like Dillis Thomas and G. H. Eliot. <laughs> what the Alfred Lord Tennyson are you talking about? <laughs> T.S. Eliot, he means. Come on, let's get down to these accounts. The trouble is, uh, these debits and credits don't balance. Oh, well, we'll have to go through all the invoices first. Well, they're all at the Rose and Crown. Oh, good. Oh, we, we can check the float while we sink a few pints. <laughs> oh, you are a funny old junk man. <laughs> uh, very amusing. Now, now, look, Charlie. Uh, here are the expenses. Upkeep of the bowling green, fifteen pounds. Yeah. Equipment, twelve pounds ten. Prizes, ten guineas. Beer, a thousand pounds. <laughs> a thousand pounds? Yes, it's an indoor bowling green. Indoor bowling green? Yeah, it's all drinking straight from the wood. <laughs> and nobody pays because they couldn't find the jack. <laughs> 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 I can't follow you. I'm not going anywhere. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, will you shut up? Now go in the other room and write your poem for the competition. Hey, uh, uh, what competition is this then? Uh, the Echo. They're giving 20 junior flash cameras to the kids who write the best poems about the children's page in the Echo. Oh, oh I like that. Especially Sammy the Snail and Freddy the Frog. Oh, yeah. It was sad about Freddy, wasn't it? Dying last week. Freddy the Frog died? Yeah, last Friday night. He swallowed a wasp and croaked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not waiting for Pat. Let's get down to the Rose and Crown now. Right, I'll get me cap. <laughs> You'll get his cap. <laughs> You've got more jokes than that Jimmy Tarbrush. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Peacock. Thank you, Mrs. Clitheroe. Uh, hello, Mr. Sinclair. James. Hello, Cuthbert. We're just going. Oh, I, I don't think we've met, have we? Of course you have. He's my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it, Jim. Uh, my name's Wheeler, Mr. Uh, Peacock. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peacock, he has the marriage bureau in town. Yes, so if you need a wife, try Mr. Peacock. And I hope you'll both be very happy. <laughs> hey, no, it took me 20 years to get rid of one I had. <laughs> I had to throw in a cantina cutlery before a sailor would take her. <laughs> All right, come on, Charlie, let's away. Uh, I'll see you later, the Pat. Cheerio, Cuthbert. Oh, oh, goodbye, Mr. Sinclair, and you, uh, Mr. Wheeler. Cheerio, uh, then. Oh, yes, yes, goodbye. I'll look forward to seeing you again, Jim. Uh, you can tell me some more about that indoor bowling green. <laughs>
What does he mean, an indoor bowling green? Don't ask me. It's just a pigment of his imaginary -ation. <laughs> In other words, he's up the totem. <laughs> James, you do come out with them. Oh, now, don't encourage him, Mr Peacock. Uh, which reminds me, Jimmy, see that you behave yourself tonight. Mrs Billington's coming. Oh, what's Beaky Bird migrating here for? <laughs> it's a meeting about the Women's Guild and not so much of the Beaky. Oh, you ought to hear Ozzy. He calls a can opener conk. <laughs> now, James, you shouldn't make fun of Mrs. Billington's conk. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, it's a waste of time talking to him. When I win my camera, I'll snap a line on her back and flog it as Cleopatra's needle. <laughs> uh, yes, James, uh, the camera competition. Uh, have you written your epic poem yet? Uh, I've written a few, but I don't think they're good enough. Um, how about this? I read the children's page each night. It always gives me great delight. It's full of news and sporting tips and very good for fish and chips. <laughs> yes, I, I think you're right to try again. <laughs> oh, oh, don't let him get you involved, Mr Peacock. I'm just going to tidy up the front room, uh, the lounge, before Mrs Billington arrives. So don't bother Mr Peacock, Jimmy. All right, ma'am. How about you writing a poem for me, Mr Peacock? Oh, if I did that, it, it wouldn't be ethical. Well, it can't be any worse than mine. <laughs> oh, come on, just, just give me an idea. Well, I, I, I suppose I'd write something like, uh, The uh, children's page is the best for boys. It teaches me good things like uh, how to make toys. The adventures of Sammy the Snail are so gay. Just keep taking the tablets three times a day. <laughs> Oh, will you please? Uh, right, ma'am. Uh, excuse me, Mr Peacock. Very well, James. If you've come for the rent, it's spent. <laughs> it's I, Mrs Billington. Oh, heck, it's Beaky. Pardon? Uh, the door, uh, it's a bit squeaky. Um, come in. Oh, thank you, boy. Has Mr Peacock arrived yet? Flew in ten minutes ago. <laughs> He's writing an ode to Sammy the Snail for a competition in the Echo. Oh, but that's not ethical. Well, it might be. He hasn't finished it yet. <laughs> I mean, the competition is for children, and it must be all their own work. I know that because I'm one of the judges. You are? Oh, yes. I am a citizen of some prominence. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Pardon? I oh, know that, I mean. You're the president of the Women's Guild. Oh, yes. And I'm also a contributor to the children's page of The Echo each week. I write the adventures of Sammy the Snail. Get away. That's the most exciting thing in the paper. Exciting? Well, it's not meant to be exciting. Well, it is. James Bond's got nothing on Sammy. The way he attacked that savage lettuce. Yes, well, uh, I think we'll forget that. Oh, Mrs. Billington, come in the lounge, would you? Oh, right you are, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, just sit down by the fire. I'll get the tea things ready. Oh, nothing special for me. Just a worm on toast. <laughs> right. We're in the living room, Jimmy. Oh, Mr. Peacock. Uh, would you take the tray of trifle and cakes into the lounge, please? Oh, certainly, Mrs. Clitheroe. I'll go and make the tea. Excuse me, James, while I get the tray. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Peacock. I'll take it in. Oh, oh no, 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 you'd better not. Oh, look, I want to get in her good books. Beak is one of the judges in the camera competition. Oh, oh, well, very well, but do be careful. Hey, Beak is Sammy the Snail's mother, you know. <laughs> that boy... What will he say next? Oh, have you taken the tray in already? Uh, uh, no, no, James has taken it in. Oh, no. Oh, you shouldn't have given it to him. But he's only got to put it on the table. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, oh, you clumsy boy. Go and get your mother this instant. Before you start shouting, Mum, it was an accident. What have you done? I was handing her the trifle so she could help herself when I tripped over the carpet and upset it. Honestly, all that fuss. Just because I asked her to lend me her spoon to scrape it up. What, off the floor? No, off Beaky's back. <laughs> oh, dear. I'd better go to her. I'll deal with you later. Well, that does it. I don't fancy your chances in the competition now. Oh, I don't know. It could have been worse. Beaky could have heard me reciting the poem I wrote about her. What poem? 
Beaky was in the garden pegging out the clothes when down came a blackbird and pecked off her nose. He took it to his wife at home and held it by the point and said, I've been out shopping, dear. Here's the Sunday joint. <laughs> For me. I made some up in bed last night. Yeah, listen, there was a young fella called Lister who bought an old bike for his sister. As she rode down the street, a spring broke in the seat and he gave Lister's sister a blister. <laughs> <laughs> What the heck's that got to do with the children's page of the Echo? Well, nothing, but, but it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Alfie, you deserve our Susan. All right, you. <laughs> Why don't you clear out and leave us alone? Uh, Susan, dear, today's early closing, isn't it? Yes. Well, shut up. <laughs> you cheeky thing, get out of here. Look, he promised to help me write a poem, didn't you? Yeah, I'm no good at poems. If I was, I'd write one about Susan. All right, we'll write one about her first. I I'll start it. <clears throat> I had an old sister, her name was Sue... She had so many wrinkles, she didn't know what to do. <laughs> now, what's the next line? I'll smack your face if you don't clear off. That's no good, Susan. It doesn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Look, g get out, Jimmy. You're confusing me. You've been confused since the day you were born. <laughs> when the doctor smacked your head instead of your butt. That's true. <laughs> now, get out. Well, I'll have to try my granddad, that's all. Well, he's gone to the Rose and Crown with old Mr Wheeler. That's the place, I remember now. I heard me granddad tell Mr Higginbottom somebody's always writing poetry at the pub. Yeah, but that, that's not the kind of poetry you want. It's, obs it's not nice. I mean, it's written on the... It's not nice. Look, nobody's going to help you, and you're not going near that pub or I'll tell Mother. All right, I'll write it myself. Just give me fourpence for the stamp. You're getting nothing from me or Alfie. Well, it's no good tapping me, Mum. She told me I've got to pay for the trifle. I know. I'll call around to see proud Percy Peacock. Oh, don't ask him for money. I won't need money. Peacock can send the letter by pigeon post. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just have a look at the paper for a minute, Pat, before I go upstairs and change. All right, Father. I'm going to tidy up the front room before Mrs Billington and Mr Peacock arrive. Don't tell me those two old hens are coming again. Now, Father, that'll do. You're as bad as our Jimmy. Incidentally, where is Jimmy? In the front room, I think. Oh, then that'll need tidying. They'll be here in ten minutes. In that case, I'll be waiting for the Rosen Crown and fire. What a smashing photo I could get of you standing in the doorway there, with the light shining on your dustpan. <laughs> What's going on? What's the idea of moving the settee round like this? I'm just seeing how I'll have my studio when I start taking pictures. Great moments recorded for the future. Susan being deported. <laughs> the Queen knighting Alfie. Oh. Grandad crowning the rent man. <laughs> You've only just entered the competition. You haven't won it. I'm bound to win one camera out of 20, and then I'll make a fortune photographing babies. Oh, I'll need a white fluffy rug. <laughs> You'll be taking them with nothing on, will you? No, I'll wear my cap. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Just help me move this settee back. Mrs. Billington and Mr. Peacock are coming. Oh, good. Beaky's one of the judges. She might bring me camera with her. Of course she won't. Well, will you ask her if I've won? I will not. Even if she knows, she won't be able to say anything until the results are published. Well, she might give you a hint. <laughs> hey, if she does, you can say a little bird told you. <laughs> now, that'll do. I don't want to hear any more rude remarks about Mrs. Billington. That'll be her. I'll let her in, Mum. All right. Bring them in the front room here. I'll just go and finish off in the kitchen. Right, Mum, leave it to me. I'll butter her up a bit. <laughs> Ma, are you all looking pretty tonight, Mrs Billington? Thank you, James. Uh, no, I'm not Mrs Billington. She's, she's coming up the park. Oh, sorry, wrong bird. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Mrs Billington. Hello, boy. Is your mother in? Yeah, she says, will you come in the front room? Oh, no, uh, it's the lounge when you're here. 
Oh, right. After you, Mrs. Billington. <laughs> Thank you, Cuthbert. Oh, that's a very nice hat you've got on. Oh, do you like it, James? Not you, Mrs. Billington. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I'm sure. Sit down, Mrs. Billington. Am I allowed to come in as well? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Peacock. Find yourself a perch, a chair. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Billington, I'm sorry about the accident with the trifle the other night. I hope you've forgiven me. Yes, I suppose so, boy. Oh, I'm glad, because as our teacher says, it's silly to fall out over trifles. <laughs> <laughs> I say, that's rather neat. <laughs> well, boy, having amused Mr. Peacock, perhaps you'll run along now and play with your friends. <laughs> no, I'd sooner watch you and Mr. Peacock. I mean, um, listen to your chirpy a talking. <laughs> James, what we have to say is not for your ears. Why, is it naughty? Yes, uh, no. <laughs> it's, it's just private. Oh, yeah. I suppose Mrs Billington wants to tell you who won the cameras in the competition that I entered for... Nothing of the kind. <gasps> oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. Uh, James, James, would you step outside for a moment? Oh, what's wrong, Mr Peacock? You've, you've gone white. Uh, excuse me a moment, Mrs Billington. Uh, uh, come along, James. Hey, what's up? You can't feel sick already. You haven't tasted any of our Susan's cakes yet. James, I have a dreadful confession to make and I don't know how to say it. Oh, whistle it. Only whistle quietly in case Beaky thinks you're a lovebird and chases you up a tree. <laughs> it's not funny, James. Well, what is it? You haven't murdered somebody, have you? I forgot to post a letter. Oh, is that all? Well, what's so terrible about not posting it a... It was your entry for the camera competition. Well, so what? A... What? You blooming big dull. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a trifle here. Look, James, I'll make it up to you. you. You've robbed me of a camera, stole it. You're a thief, that's what you are. James, my sister's buying me a new camera for my birthday, so you can have my old one. If you posted my letter, I'd have a new one. But it's a, it's a good one. It was quite expensive, and I'll give you a film with it. Three films? Uh, yeah, yes, all right. Coloured ones? If you like. And it, it has a flash on it. Oh, that's smashing. Uh, when can I have it, Mr Peacock? Tomorrow, James. I'll pop round first thing in the morning with the camera and the three films. Oh. Uh, just a minute. How much are flash bulbs? A, a shilling each. But I have three at home, so that will save some money. Yeah, you'll only have to buy nine now. <laughs> to make the dozen you're giving me. <laughs> and a packet of paper hankies as well, please, Susan. Oh, right, oh, mother. Now, you sure you've got plenty of time before you meet Alfie? Because Jimmy could go for these things, you know. Oh, Mum, I've been to the shops three times today. If this keeps up, I'll have to have my feet sold and healed. <laughs> if I tell you to, you'll have to go ten times. Oh, all right. You shouldn't have had a son. You should have had a retriever. <laughs> it's all right, Mother. I have to go and get Grandad's medicine. Well, Jimmy could get that. I can't. They won't serve me in the Rose and Crown. <laughs> well, you be cheeky. Susan's going to the chemist. Oh, good. Well, would you get me a film, please, Susan? No, oh, all right. Oh, good, lass, Sue. Uh, Mum, where's the paper? I haven't seen the cartoon page. Oh, just a minute, clever boy. Where's the money for your film? Oh, yes. Well, um, I was wondering... Uh... No, I won't. Uh, Mama, do you think you could... Not another penny. <laughs> if you're going to be taking pictures all the time, you'll have to pay for your own films. Oh, can't we get them on tick? So much a week. Like me grandad got the telly and his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to do what this man did in the paper. Send a photo up. Where? Oh, on the back page there. He got ten pounds for that picture. What? This one of the bloke rescuing the lad from the river? Oh, that's it. Hmm. Reader sends in action photograph. We paid Mr. Thomas Jackson ten pounds for the above action picture of the rescue. That's it. I'll have to get some action pictures. Um, hey, Susan, do you fancy a walk along the canal bank? <laughs> Yeah, look, I don't understand. You drag me around with this ladder, say you're Susan, shouting for help. She will be. 
Any, any minute she will be. Any minute now she'll open that bathroom window, lean out wearing a towel and scream for help. That's when you go up the ladder and I get the action picture of the rescue. Yeah, how do you know she'll scream? Cos I put a mouse in the bathroom and jammed the door. <laughs> I don't care how many mattresses you put on the ground, I'm not going to jump off the garage roof. Oh, Susan. <laughs> yeah, I love being alone like this. But not alone, alone. I mean, alone with you, together. Yes, Alfie. Just to kiss your hair and rub my fingers through your cheeks. <laughs> yes. You know, the other way around. Yes, Alfie. Yeah, I could hold you in my arms forever. Just hold it for one second. Thank you, Alden's Richard Burton. <laughs> Jimmy, when did you take this one of me? When you were having a nap on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> well, it's a nice one, Pat. Oh, yes, quite charming. Yeah, well, it's all right, but you can hardly call that an action picture, Jim. No, it's a still life. <laughs> hey, uh, look at this, Grandad. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, this is the beauty of you, Cuthbert. Uh, of me? Uh, hugging out the washing. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, let me see, Father. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you do look rather startled, Mr. Peacock. Yes, I took it just as the clothesline snapped. <laughs> <laughs> and Cuthbert's left standing there, holding up a pair of his sister's unmentionables. <laughs> My sister's? Well, they're not yours, I hope. <laughs> well, I, I'm afraid I don't find it all that amusing. Oh, Cuthbert, where's your sense of humour? Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, it was just a bit of a coincidence, wasn't it? You being there just at the moment that the line broke. <laughs> yes, uh, look at this one of Alfie and Susan. He's giving her artificial recreation. <laughs> James, you mean Alfie's giving Susan artificial respiration. Recreation is when you have fun. Oh, do they look miserable? <laughs> <laughs> I cut you there, Cuthbert. Oh, don't encourage him, Father. <laughs> oh, but can't you take a joke either? <laughs> oh, I say. <laughs> How very droll. <laughs> Mr. Sinclair, with your great sense of humour, you should find this very amusing. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? This next photograph of a model boat. <laughs> well, what's funny about that? <laughs> Mr. Sinclair's playing with it in his bar. Chip <laughs> <laughs> it. Chip it. How dare you get a photographic that? <laughs> Mr. Sinclair, where's your sense of humour? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Grandad, it, it's only a joke. <laughs> well, I've got some news for you, dear brother, that isn't a joke. Mr. Higginbottom is coming round to see you. Oh, I can't see him without an appointment. He'll have to go on the waiting list with Sophia Loren and the Beatles. <laughs> what does Higginbottom want? My brother's blood. Oh, heck. What's he been up to now? He's nearly put Ozzy in hospital with his camera tricks. It wasn't my fault. Anyway, he didn't hurt himself. He fell on his head. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Well, little Cecil Beaton here came dashing up to Ozzy and asked him to rescue a cat up a tree. So Ozzy climbed the tree, but when he got halfway up, he found it was an old fur glove that Jimmy had put there. Well, there's nothing terrible about that. When Ozzy was on the bottom branch, it broke, and you took a picture of him falling. He only fell three feet. Anyway, accidents will happen. Oh, especially when the branch is half chopped through. <laughs> that does it. You've had your last penny for films for that camera. Oh, Mum, I've only got two snaps left in it. Well, somebody could take two pictures of you before and after I've spanked you. Oh, oh, please. Oh, I don't think there's any need for violence. Surely, if he's not allowed any more films for his camera, that's punishment enough. Yeah, that's right. If you keep hitting me, I'll grow up frustrated. <laughs> Look, you're staying in every night this week. And I've told you, not another penny for films from anybody. Oh, all right. But can I take these last two snaps? And then the film can be developed. Very well. But that's the finish. Oh, well, I'll go around and take a couple of pictures at the railway station. The gang of train spot in there. So I'll tell them I can't come out anymore this week. 
Oh, cheer up, James. You might still get a valuable snap if something exciting happens at the station. Oh, yeah. One of the porters might break into a trot. <laughs> Susan, those are not very nice words to come from such pretty lips. No, but they fit our Jimmy. Well, thank goodness we'll have no more of him and his camera. You're quite right, Susan. And remember, Alfie, you're not to give him any more money either. Oh, I won't if you say I'm not to. Man, I, I must say I feel sorry for him. You know, I, I, I bet he's right miserable. Hiya, folks. <laughs> now, if you'll all get a bit closer together, I'll take a nice group shot. Uh, move to your right a bit, Alfie. I can still see Susan's face. Yeah, all right, just shut up. <laughs> Jimmy... Have you scrounged another film? I've got three, and I bought them with me own money. Well, you said you had no money. Mm, I sold one of me photos. What, the, to the Echo? No, to Beaky Billington. Beaky Bi Mrs Billington bought one? Yeah, I think she must have been sorry because I didn't win the competition. Oh, nonsense. What picture was it? One of her kissing her husband goodbye at the railway station. I wouldn't care. I, I hadn't even had it developed. I don't understand. <laughs> Neither do I, but when she saw I'd taken a picture of her, she came dashing over and bought the reel of film off me for a pound. Then she opened it out and spoiled the lot. Yeah, I think I understand why she bought it. Why? Mrs Billington's husband's been away for the last three weeks. <laughs> Involved with the Kitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan, with Brian Truman, Edwin Apps, and Rosalie Williams. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the Kid himself. <laughs> I got a smashing idea. I told our Susan I'd taken a photo of Alfie kissing another woman. And Susan bought it off me for five bob. <laughs> she looked at it and then and get, then got annoyed with me. Well, it was Alfie kissing his mother. ta -ra! We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... Too Many Sisters. <laughs> Astronaut Clitheroe to the spaceship. Don't like the look of this planet. I'm coming back in for me tea. Oh, come on, wake up, sleepyhead. Oh, wait a minute. There's something breathing on my space helmet. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy, wake up. It's a monster with a pony's tail. <laughs> Keep away from me. Will you wake up? Get off me, you big, hairy monster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 what? Uh, oh, it's you, Susan. Uh, oh, I thought it was funny. A monster with curlers in. <laughs> All right, come on, get up. Oh, thank goodness you woke me up. That place was horrible. Even the plants were monsters. A stick of celery tried to eat me. <laughs> oh, don't talk silly. It did. It kept picking me up and dipping me in some salt. <laughs> Look, for the last time, get up, will you? Oh, oh all right. Keep your cold cream on. What time is it? Well, nearly half past eight. Oh, I'll, be, I'll be late for school. Oh, and then I'll get the cane off another monster. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It's Saturday, isn't it? Yes, now hurry up. Hurry up. Today's me day off. I was going to have a lie-in and you woke me up. Oh, I'll fix you. Where is it? Where's what? Me space jet gun that fires darts with suckers on. Ah, <laughs> oh, here it is, on the table. Now to bag myself an old crow. Oh, don't you dare shoot at me. Uh, it's no use hiding behind the wardrobe. I can still see enough of you to make a target. <laughs> I'm warning you, put that thing down. Ready, aim. What's going on? Fire! 
<laughs> oh, sorry, Grandad. I was aiming for Scraggy Neck. <laughs> oh, don't be funny. Give me the gun. But, Grandad, I was only... Don't argue. Give it here. Oh, all right. Here you are. Of all the stupid things, shooting a gun off in the bedroom... She's right, Grandad. Give it to me before you cause any damage. <laughs> You can cut that out, my lad, shooting at Susan like that. You'll have more sense. I'm sorry, ma'am, but she woke me up when I wanted to lie in. Today's Saturday. Schoolboys rest. Susan woke you up because I told her to. We've got a lot to do today, haven't we, Father? Aye, there's all the shopping and the errands. And this afternoon we're going to the hospital again to see Auntie Frida. Oh, good. What time do we catch the bus? We catch it at one o'clock. You don't. Eh? But I went last week. Aye, and that's why you're not going this week. <laughs> There was enough trouble with you last Saturday, walking up and down the ward asking all the patients what was wrong with them. <laughs> what about all the trouble when the ward sister came in with that tray of injections? I thought there were special drinks for the patients. <laughs> all I did was shout, bottoms up! <laughs> Well, you're not going with us today. You can stay in and mind the house. Why, is soppy Susan going with you to the hospital? Yes, she is. Right, tell her if she annoys me once more, she'll be in the next bed to Auntie Frida. <laughs> Look, I'm warning you, we want no trouble with you today. You'll behave yourself. Oh, heck, I think I'll stop in bed all day. Grandad, wake me up for jukebox jury, will you? <laughs> Look, now, your mother's warned you. Now, just keep out of mischief. Oh, all right. Oh, what a life. <laughs> I think I'll try and get back to me dream. I was much happier with all them monsters. <laughs> oh, come downstairs, Father. We've got a lot to do if we're going to that hospital this afternoon. So I'll go to the grocers and the butchers, Father, and you go to the greengrocers and call at the shoe shop. Right, yeah, Pat. Is there anything I can do, Mother? Yeah, go and take a running... Jimmy! <laughs> I shan't tell you again. You can wash up if you like, Susan. Yes, Mum, and I'll wipe. Oh, no, you won't. There was enough trouble last time you wiped. I was just showing Susan one of Tommy Cooper's tricks. Yes, but he gets paid for breaking his plates. Oh, before I go, Susan, the dry cleaners van might call. You know what I want to done, don't you? Yeah, we know. If to clean and press your kilt and give your spar in a blue rinse. <laughs> funny, boy. You better empty the pockets of your blazer. That can go for cleaning as well. Oh, come on, Pat. Let's be off. Right. We'll go out the back way. See you later, Susan. Oh, right, Mother. Now give the man your suit, Grandad. Well, I'd better empty my pockets for the dry cleaners. I wonder how much they charge to do me neck. <laughs> Hello, what's this? Oh, of course. How's this water squirter? <laughs> and it's loaded as well. Mm, I think I'll go and show it to my dear sister in the kitchen. <laughs> then she can wipe herself at the same time as the pots. <laughs> Um, Susan, dear. Oh, get out. Well, that's nice when I've come to give you a present. Look, I'm in no mood for a present. Yeah, for the sweetest sister a lad ever had. And I'm sorry for shooting at you this morning. No, oh, it doesn't matter, seeing that you missed me. Don't worry, I won't miss this time. <laughs> Pardon? Oh, uh, it's time we made it up and became proper friends. So, uh, I'm giving you a present. Oh, I can't see any present. Well, what is it? It's something you'll never get from Daft Alfie. <laughs> well, what's that? A ring. Look, here it is on my finger. And believe me, it's all yours. Well, that cheap-looking thing, it's only a bit of tin. Ah, but look closer at the design on it. Go on. Oh, look, if this sounds some sort of joke... <laughs> Got ya! <you>. Oh! <laughs> oh, I'm all wet. Well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> Isn't clever? A squirter that looks like a ring. Get off me. Give me that thing. I'll give over. You'll burst me boom. Hand it over. Hey, give it me back. It's mine. I borrowed it off Ozzy. Well, I'll return it for you when I see him. Oh, you can't do that. He doesn't know he's lent it to me. <laughs> Look, this squirt is going in my purse here, and it's staying there till I return it to Ozzy myself. But I'm going out to play with him in a minute. Suppose he mentions it. What shall I say? Well, just tell him I'll be returning it to him. All right, I will. I'll tell him if he wants his little squirter to look out for a great big drip. <laughs> Time will they be back from the hospital?
hospital, Jimmy. Well, uh, visiting time's two till three. They'll be back sometime after four. After four? Um, is that a gun you've got there? Uh, let me see. Barrel, trigger, back sight, foresight. Oh, it's a pork sausage, you daft. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, but what, what, what does it shoot? Bend down and I'll show you. <laughs> Look, it shoots a dot with a sucker on the end. Uh, do you like apples, Alfie? Oh, yeah, I love them. Well, stick this one on your head and I'll shoot it off. <laughs> yeah, I won't. I'm not stupid, you know. Oh, it's only a rumour, then. Yes. <laughs> You'll get my boot round your butt end in a minute. Mm. Yeah, I'll answer the phone. It might be for me. I told the garage to ring me here about me back. Right, oh, Alfie. Yeah, hello, is that you, Bert? Uh, my name's Drinkwell. Oh, I didn't know it was your tea break. <laughs> Pardon? I'm Drinkwell. Oh, I, I don't think I know you, Mr. Inkwell. It, um, it, is it me valve or has me gasket gone? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, am I speaking to someone called Clitheroe? Yeah. yeah, I mean, no. Well, well, yeah, because they live here, but they're all out except Jimmy. I'm in, but I'm not them. I mean, I'm not one of them. <laughs> Though, I suppose I will be when I marry their Susan. Is that the foreman? No, no, no. I, I found a purse outside my house which appears to belong to a Miss Susan Clitheroe. It's got her name and address inside. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Oilwell. I don't... Drinkwell. Thomas Drinkwell. Look, can I speak to Miss Clitheroe herself, please? Oh, just a minute. J Jimmy! What is it, Alfie? This fell on the phone. It is not my bike. Of course he isn't. Who ever heard of a talking bike? Oh. No, shut up. You see, he's found it and he wants to know what to do with it. Kick it around till he loses it. What's he found? Your Susan's purse. Eh? Hey? Oh, but that's here in my pocket. Oh, heck, it's gone. I must have lost it in the fight. Fight? Yeah, with Ozzy, when we were down West Park Drive. We, we had a fight over who should shoot the gun, and that's where I must have dropped the purse. Well, this fella says he found it outside his house. Oh, heck no. In that case, he must be baldy. Oh, and I must be barmy for getting involved in this. Hey, but what happened to this fella? He was one of my targets. I aimed for his bald head and got him on the back of the neck. Oh, heck. Well, what about Susan's purse? More important still, what about Susan? She'll blab on me when she finds out I took a purse from her handbag without her knowing. You what? Ooh, you little bad un. I only borrowed it to get something of Ozzy's, his squirter. But because this bloke's got it, it it'll all come out. Swiping the purse, fighting Ozzy and shooting the man. They, they'll murder me. Well, I'm baffled. All I know is he wants to speak to Susan. I've, I've got it. He can speak to Susan. Yeah, but not now. She's not here. Of course she is. Give me that phone. Hello? Are you still connected with us? Yes, I'm still here. Is that Miss Clitheroe? Well, it's certainly not her grandfather. <laughs> I understand you found my purse. Yes. You give me your address, I'll call for it. Now, that's no good. I'm going away on business this afternoon. I'll be gone at least a week. Oh, flipping egg. Oh, oh dear. Oh, could you put it in the post, please? No, I could not. Look, Miss Clitheroe, I'll drop it in on my way downtown and give it to you personally. But you can't. She's out. I mean, um, uh, very well, then. Uh, but I'm going out myself shortly. Uh, could you be here before four? Well, it's now uh, ten to three. I can be there in about ten minutes. Oh, that would be fine. I look forward to seeing your purse. I mean, um, <laughs> seeing my purse. Um, see you soon, Mr. Um, drink well. Drink well. Oh, I do. Whenever someone else... <laughs> Whenever someone else is paying. <laughs> Cheery, babe. Oh, I'm glad that's over. My tonsils were giving out. <laughs> what a flipping egg do you think you're playing at? Look, the bloke insisted on giving Susan the purse personally. Hey, that's good. Purse personally. <laughs> Peter Piper picked a purse. Oh, belt up and talk sense for a minute. Oh, really? What an uncouth boyfriend I've got, to be sure. Listen, bird brain. If this fella calls to see the real Susan, I'm in dead lumber. So I've got to take a place. Come on, we're going upstairs. But, 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 but far. So that Mr. Drinkwell can meet a girl called Susan Clitheroe and give her a purse. How do you think I'll look in a gym slip and silk stockings? Ridiculous. You can't be Susan. You'll never get away with it. Don't you worry. When I finish my soppy suit disguise, it'll be perfect. 
I'll wear her old school clothes. But then this, this bloke won't fall for you, these guys. Not even with a gym slip on. He'll see right through it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, in that case, I'd better put some thick underwear on. <laughs> There's a right load of junk in this box room. If we saw this lot out, it might be worth a few, Bob. Hey, look, is there any of Susan's old junk up here? Yeah, there's half the old. Now, don't start, I won't help you. Uh, this is hers here. Hey, look at them letters tied with blue ribbon. The love letters, Alfie, from another fella. I'll let you read them for a bob. <laughs> Leave them alone. They belong to Susan's past. Oh, and I suppose you're Susan's present. Yes. She hasn't got much of a future, has she? <laughs> Look, shut up and find some clothes to put on. Hey, there's a rattle I used to play with when there was a baby. <laughs> and there's my first baby shoes. Me, me mum keeps all them baby things. Hey, look at that bayonet. Don't tell me you're playing with a bayonet when you were a baby. <laughs> well, we had two. We couldn't buy flick knives then. <laughs> Here's me granddad's your clock. A war souvenir. Hey, I caught him in the box room once, sitting on his old sea chest, with tears in his eyes, singing, Among my souvenirs. <laughs> Mind you, it was after closing time. <laughs> hey, my dad always used to sing that. Yeah, he had some very funny souvenirs. Mm, well, there's you and your mother. <laughs> now, look, Belco. How does that song go? I feel more talk and red and... No, 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 wait a minute. It, um, it starts with nothing. With nothing? Yeah. There's nothing left for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I say, you be your dad and I'll be me granddad. <laughs> Off you go. One, two. There's, There's nothing left for me of days I used to be. <laughs> They're just a memory among the souvenirs. <laughs> Some letters tie with blue. I thought of the ground for two. I find a road from you. <laughs> Tokens red <laughs> in my treasure chest. There's Susan's old string vest <laughs> and Grandad's combination. <laughs> I count them. Are oh, there? Them's not the words. <laughs> well, I thought I'd jazz it up a bit. <laughs> Give me a hand with this box of Susan's. I'll get changed downstairs. It's a, it's a bit cold up here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jim, but you're the funniest looking girl I've ever seen. Will you stop cackling and help me to fasten Mrs. Penders? <laughs> Give me another threatening bit. You got any more threatening bits? <laughs> I'll tie a bit of string round me stockings. <laughs> you you want to tie some round your gym slip? This is the latest style. Oh, dead with it, our kid. <laughs> <laughs> and here is Susan, our model, in an ankle length gym slip and Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly kinky. <laughs> well, Susan, you look more like Dora Droopy Drawers. <laughs> And you could be a model from Centrinians. Hey, Alfie, put this old hat of me man's on here, go. <laughs> yeah, I'm so full of dust. Well, it'll match your head. <laughs> hey, Alfie, now uh, walk up and down, go on. Mm, all right. Yeah, how's this? <laughs> Mrs. All You've Got an Ugly Daughter. 
<laughs> if you don't, I think we're both getting pantomime as ugly sisters. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we, we better get cracking. This fella might be here any minute. Well, I'm nearly ready. I'll just tie this gym slip up a bit. There you are. That's right. There's still miles too big for you. Well, you know what mothers say. Get a size larger and she'll grow into it. <laughs> anything. Mind, I'll, uh, I'll have to fix me hair. What are you going to do? Put a, put a floor map on your head and call yourself Topsy? <laughs> yeah, I've got it all worked out. I've got one of my mum's head scarves to wear. <laughs> See? And I'll, and I'll say I've got me curlers in. <laughs> like all the women do when they go to the laundrette. Well, that's... <laughs> hey, now, now, that's a good idea. Let's see it on. All right, mine, I'm not sure how you took the ends in. See, uh, goes round like this and that goes in there. Hey, how's that? Well, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, look more like an Indian in a turban than a woman in curlers. <laughs> Please, I am conducting this bus and I am telling you two times once more. <laughs> sitting. <laughs> so will you please move your seat because I am not going to ding ding <laughs> until you sit sit. You won't be able to sit if you make a mess of this so stop fooling about and, and, and work out what you're going to do when this fella comes. Oh no just tell him I'm Susan. I'll tell him I'm in a hurry. Get the person and, and you get rid of him. Hey uh should I put some cream on to hide my face? Yeah, yeah. unless you can find a bucket. <laughs> oh, very clever. We must get you disguised as something. I know, a human being. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, watch it. I'm the one who's got to help you, you know. Well, that's what worries me. Anyway, um, how do I look? Gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be funny. Do I look like a girl? Yeah. Step to us, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, you're all right, Jim. Honest? Y you think I look all right? Definitely. Give us a kiss. <laughs> this isn't funny. I've got to fool this bloke or they'll all be clouting me. Him, Susan, me granddad, I'll, I'll be going up and down like a yo-yo. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I hope this fellow is up, though. We, we've got to get rid of him before your family arrives. Oh, they won't be back for at least two hours. After visiting time's over, they'll be queuing up for an hour to get on the bus. <laughs> Just a waste of time and money, that's all it is. All the way to the hospital and Frida's not there. Look, Father, you should be pleased that Frida's well enough to be discharged from the hospital. But surely they could have let us know she'd gone home and saved us going all that way for nothing and getting a taxi back as well. If it's the taxi you're worrying about, I'll pay for it. I wasn't going to wait for a bus in all of that rain. Oh, it's not that. It's just that, that all they could have told us. Why, well, Frida probably didn't know she was going to be discharged until last night. Or maybe she discharged herself because she thought Jimmy might be coming to visit her again. <laughs> now, don't start about Jimmy, Susan. Oh, right, here we are. That'll be eight shillings. Eight shillings? We just wanted a ride in the taxi, not to buy it. Ha, <laughs> 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 very comical. Well, now that I've finished laughing, can I have the eight bob, please? There's ten shillings. Keep the change. What? <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you, lady. It's easy to tell you're not Scotch. What do you mean? <laughs> the accent, mate, the accent. Oh, Grandad, you are embarrassing. Look, the last time I did that journey, I just paid four shillings. Ah, oh, the last time you paid, it was probably in an handsome cab. <laughs> hey, come back here and say that to my face, you cheeky young robber. Father, the neighbours will hear you. Uh, excuse me, uh, I see that this uh, is the house. Um, are you the Clitheroes, by any chance? Well, yes, I'm Mrs. Clitheroe. And if you're selling anything, we don't want any. <laughs> no, uh, uh, would you be Miss Susan Clitheroe? Oh, yes. How did you know? Well, I'm Mr. Drinkwell, the one who was talking to you on the phone about 15 minutes ago. You're talking to me? Yes, I, I told you I'd find your person. You said I had to come straight round before you went out. But Susan's been out with us for, well, over half an hour. We've just arrived back. Look, what are you up to? Oh, please, Grandad. You say you found my purse, Mr. Drinkwell? Yes, I told you on the phone. Mind, your voice sounds different now. Oh, just a minute. Oh, what was that voice like? Could it have been a young boy? Well, uh, come to think of it, the second voice was very young. 
Might have been a boy saying it was a girl. A second voice? There were two voices then. Yes, yes. Oh, oh the first was a man's voice, I think. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it sounded like a man, but what he said sounded like... Well, uh... Like a twit? Yes. It was our... <laughs> Right, Grandad. Anyway, the second one was our Jimmy. But why should he pretend to be you? I don't know, but I'm going to find out with this gentleman's help. My help? Yes. We'll go around the back and let ourselves into the kitchen quietly. Would you go to the front door and just say you've come to see Susan, Kitter? What for, Susan? Oh, that's what I want to see. Hey, what, what do I do after I go in? Well, just pretend to fall for whatever trickery my brother's up to. And don't be surprised at anything you see. Oh, thank you. Hey, this will be him, Jim, the purse, the bit of the fella. I know, Mr. Drinkwell. <sighs> Don't panic, just let him in. Oh, but, but, but I think you ought to go. No, I want to stay in here with me back to the window so he doesn't get too good a look at me. <laughs> All right, I'll go then. Oh, good lad, Alfie. Let him have a good look at your face, then he's bound to think I'm pretty. <laughs> Oh, belt up. Oh, dear. Why do I always get myself involved? Not to have my head examined for dry rot. <laughs> uh, Miss Susan Clitheroe? No, I'm Alfie Hall. I mean, uh, Miss Susan, he's in there. She is, I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, well, would you come in, please? I've uh, come about the purse. My name Yeah, is... I, I know. You're Mr. Drink-a-lot. Yeah, suck well. <laughs> Who's it? <laughs> Drink well. Good health. I mean, <laughs> I mean, come in, uh, Jimmy. It's um, oh, Susan. I mean, it's Mr. Jimmy. Did, 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 did you say your name was Jimmy, Mr. Um... It's Thomas. Uh, Tommy, if you like. Uh, Susan, this is Tommy. Uh, Mr. Drinkwell, is it not? Uh, yes, and uh, you're Miss Susan Clitheroe, are you? Oh, indeed, I am. <laughs> Aren't I, Alfred? Yes, Jimmy. The who the leg? Tommy, I mean, yes, he is. I mean, she is. Uh, sorry, sorry, Alfred. Did I stab you with my stilettos? <laughs> well, uh, Miss uh, Clitheroe, may I sit down? Yes, but don't take your coat off. You're not stopping. <laughs> I mean, uh, Alfred and me have to go soon, don't we? Oh, yes. And when you've got to go, you've got... Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, here's the purse. I, I hope it's all right. Um, how much money was there in it? Oh, she didn't say. Uh, I couldn't say. Uh, I mean, well, um, cheerio. You know, Miss Clitheroe, you're much younger than I expected. Oh, not really. It's the soap I use, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the one they advertise on the telly. In every bar, it has a dirty great dollop of cream. <laughs> No, I, I mean, um, when I looked in your purse to find your address, I noticed that you use lipstick and mascara. Oh, yes, well, one must have red lips uh, to mess up the cups and um, to be like the other girls. And the mascara? Oh, I always put a drop behind me ears. <laughs> oh, heck. Well, uh, goodbye, Mr. Drinkwell. Say goodbye, Alfred. Goodbye, Jimmy. Be a Tommy. Goodbye. Are you a relative, Mr. Um... Maybe a Hall. No, I'm, I'm, I'm Susan's boyfriend. <laughs> well, surely you're, you're too old for Susan here. Ah, yes, but, well, you see, um... <laughs> He's young, really, only 15. <laughs> he just worries a lot. <laughs> well, it's good to be home, Pat. Oh, heck, ta-ra, Mr. Dodo, ta-ta, Mr. Drinkwell. All right, all right, don't push. Oh, there you are, you two. Oh, hello, Mother. Ta-ta, uh, Mr. Drinkwell. <laughs> Mother? Hello, what's going on? Oh, uh, nothing, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you dressed up for? And who's he? The lodger. <laughs> all right, Jimmy, we know all about your little masquerade. Uh, oh, heck, you mean, uh... Mr. Drinkwell met us outside and we've listened to every word. What, you mean he's been kidding us all Supper bucket here. <laughs> That'll do. Now, come on now, out with it. What's the game? Oh, well, I've had it now. I was getting my squirter ring out of Susan's purse and she walked in, so I slipped the purse in my pocket, went out and forgot. 
Then I dropped it outside Mr Drinkwell's house in West Park Drive when I ran away after shooting me gun at him. But I don't live anywhere near West Park Drive. I, I just live up the road from here, Poplar Grove. You mean you're not Baldy? It, it wasn't you, I mean. I dropped it on the way home. You see, clever clogs, nobody would have known it was you. Susan would have thought she had dropped it. Oh, heck. And I wasted all day getting dolled up in scraggy necks clothes. <laughs> yes, aren't you a silly little girl? Watch it, skinny ribs. <laughs> One more word and I'll belt you with my handbag. <laughs> Those involved with the Clinero Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, and Brian Truman as Charlie Wheeler. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. <laughs> trouble through Scraggy Sue. Last year the vicar couldn't get enough girls to be angels in the church pageant. So the big sister of mine told him if it was short this year, she'd send me in one of her frocks. <laughs> How can anybody be so rotten to their own flesh and blood? Taro! <laughs> We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... Sliding into Trouble. <laughs> right, Alfie, me tea's brewed, me toast under the griller. Now for the really exciting part of me cookery lesson, opening the tin of beans. Oh, look at him. Fanny Craddock in short pants. <laughs> hey, now, keep your eye on that toast. Here is how I open the tin without messing about with those daft little tin openers. First, I take this big hammer. Hey, put that hammer down. I'll open that tin for you. I can manage. I only use the hammer to dock the tin opener in a bit, just to give me a start. Ah, well, hurry up. I think your toast's nearly done. Right. Tin on table, opener in one hand, hammer in the other. I'll give the opener a gentle tap and... <laughs> oh, heck, where did it go? Yeah. <laughs> it's rolled into the pantry there. Oh, silly me, I don't know my own strength. Hey. Hey, so something's burning. Look, oh, Jimmy, heck. Jimmy, you're toast. I did open the tin after all. There's beans all over the floor. <laughs> There's flames coming out of the grill. Oh, all right, don't panic. <laughs> Oh, heck, it stinks worse than me granddad's thick twist. <laughs> oh, heck, the flipping thing stuck. <coughs> Here, let me have a go. <coughs> come out. Oh, come out. <laughs> Stand back while Fireman Jim goes into action. <laughs> it's out. Lesson two, how to clean up the mess from lesson one. Your mother's just... <laughs> What's that shocking smell? It's Jimmy. <laughs> Do you mind? No, I mean, he's making his tea, Mr Sinclair, but he's had an accident. Oh, no. What's happened? Well, he had to put the toast out. No, not outside, just out because he's had it. Well, he hasn't now because he's not fit to eat. <laughs> yeah, anyway, he couldn't because he spilled the beans. Okay. Some of that sport's got into your head. Your brain's in a fog. Look, I'll tell you. I'm hungry and I was making a meal. I'd brewed the tea and I was just opening the beans when the toast caught fire. Well, the next time you make tea brewed in the pot, it's all over the stove here. Of course it is. What do you think I put the toast out with? <laughs> yeah, I, I warned you, Mr Sinclair. I said, better wait until your mum comes home. Father. Oh, hello, Alfie. Yeah, hello, Mrs. Clitheroe. I'm sorry, Jimmy, that we're late, but we got delayed and we met Mrs. Billington. Beaky Billington, I bet she's had her tea. Birdseed butties. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she insisted on taking your granddad and me into the Savoy Cafe. A cafe? I knew it! They were stuffing themselves while I was here collapsing with hunger. Well, we only had toasted tea cakes. Only? 
Daddy says we only had toasted tea cakes, crisp and brown, with great pools of butter all over them, and dirty great dollops of raspberry jam. <laughs> all right, you've made your point. I'll get your tea ready. And you can clean that mess up, Jim, before she sees it and you're in trouble. Who's taken some of the cooking pack off this shelf? Too late, Grandad. I'm in trouble already. <laughs> I only bought it this morning. And what's this mess all over the floor? Alfie, I think she's found the beans. <laughs> all right. What are those beans doing all over my nice clean floor? Oh, uh, Alfie knows about them, don't you, Alfie? Oh, yeah, but it was an accident, really. Jimmy was showing me lesson one, and when he got to the opening of the tin of beans, I said I'd do it. <laughs> Very nice of you to want to take the blame, Alfie. That's all right. I'm not taking the blame. Mrs. Clinton, it was him. He opened the beans with a hammer, and just because he didn't know his own strength, it's me to blame. Well, here's something he can't blame you for, Alfie. Oh, what's that, Susan? Something I've just found in the airing cupboard. Oh, hey. What did you find, Susan? A sledge. A what? sledge? What, in the airing cupboard? I can explain. Oh, you'd better, my lad. Where did you get the sledge from? I bought it off Ozzy and it was just like their house. It needed a good cleaning. So, after I'd washed it, I put it in the airing cupboard to dry it. Oh, well, if you did clean it, why did I get my hands all greasy when I picked it up? Oh, that's easy, clever clogs. The grease is supposed to be on it. <laughs> I rubbed the runners with cooking fat so it'll go faster down here. <laughs> oh, heck. The fat's in the fire now. You use my cooking fat on your sledge? Well, yes, well, it's for the winter sports I'm mm. inviting you all to. Well, what nonsense is this? Oh, toboggan, 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 in it. <laughs> Sledging. Like they do in the Alps, only this is down Daisy Hill near the park. Instead of spending a fortune going abroad, you can have your winter sports here at home for only tuppence a ride. Oh, yes, I'm sure it'll be just like the real thing. Oh, you're right. You'll think you're in Switzerland, because while you're sledging in the snow, you'll hear Alfie sitting on a shooting stick, yodelling. I can't yodel. You can if you sit on the wrong end. <laughs> oh, you shut up. You, you wouldn't get me sledging down Daisy Hill. There's a big wall near the bottom. Oh, yes. I wouldn't want any of my pals to hurt themselves. I know. Uh, you can lend me a spare crash helmet. I'd like to remind you that I wear that. Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me, Susan. Uh, before I let my pals use it, I'll get it disinfected. Hey, now, for the last time, Jimmy, I'm not painting your sledge for you. Oh, go on, Alfie, and you can have the first ride down Daisy Hill. Half price. Oh, what an honour. I'm thrilled to death. I've told her. You think you're winter sporting in the Alps. You'll be able to go sledging, throw snowballs at our Susan. Who knows? You might even meet that monster our teacher told us about, the uh, abdominal snowman. <laughs> it's a great big snow monster who roars at you and frightens you to death. Oh, there you are, Clitheroe. Here he is. You can meet him now. <laughs> I want a word with you, troublemaker. Alfie, what does he want you for? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Take the notice of it, Mr. Abdominal, Bear Monster Man, Snow Bottom, get the egging the bottom. Oh, shut up, Tatty Head. <laughs> go on, go on, you make the streets look untidy. You sound a bit annoyed about something, Mr. Higginbottom. Has your polo pony gone lame again? <laughs> That'll do. It's my Aussie. Oh, I thought he was limping a bit. <laughs> Have you had him to the vet yet? One of these days, Clitheroe, I'll, I'll do time for you. I will. I'll give you a right belt in now if you don't watch it. You want to be careful, Mr Higginbottom, cos I've got my bodyguard with me, haven't I, Alfie? Yeah, 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 what? <laughs> right. Huh? I'm going home. Oh. Oh, good idea, I'll come with you. Come here. Oh, you won't. You come here, you little swindler. There's no need for that, Mr Higginbottom. Listen, this young brat bought a sledge off my Aussie. I know that. And he's had it for over a week. I know that as well. And he still hasn't paid Aussie the money for it. Yeah, I, oh, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> Did Jimmy have no right to keep it a week and not pay for it? Of course I have. I got it the same way you get a washing machine. Seven days free trial. <laughs> 
Look, you won't be able to use a sledge in hospital, so just stand over the ten bob. Well, I'm not paying you now. I see a me fixed a date when I was going to pay him. I know. February the 29th. <laughs> ah, that's not long to go. I mean, 30 days after. All the rest of the... Oh, <laughs> exactly. There isn't a February the 29th till next leap year, 1968. <laughs> I've got in the kitty now. One and rotten three apens. <laughs> a whole day scrounging for ninepence. Thinking bottom will probably be here in an hour, and I'm nearly nine bob short. Oh, my granddad says money talks, but I can't even raise a whisper. <laughs> Thinking bottom will probably be here in an hour, and I'm nearly nine bob short. Well, I'll give my mob one more chance to cough up, otherwise I'll just have to dust the gas meter with a big brick. <laughs> Dozy Dora's in the back kitchen. I'd, I'd better start with her. Oh, you're here, Sue. Washing up. Yes, I usually wash up in the kitchen. It makes such a mess in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do anything for you? Yes, they're great. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. You've got a great sense of humour. And you're so pretty with it. Oh, am I? Yes. Sue, uh, I've been thinking... Go on. ...about charging you tuppence a ride on my sledge. It doesn't seem right. I mean, me own sister. I'll tell you what I'll do. What? I'll flog you a season ticket. Nine bob. <laughs> what do you think of that? I still think you should emigrate. Here's the tea towel, you infant. I finished drying the dishes so you can borrow it to get dry behind the ears. Bye-bye. No, -bye. Oh, just a minute, Sue, please. Go on, lend us two bob, Susan. All right, stingy Sarah, keep your money. <laughs> Buy yourself a bolt and shove off. <laughs> oh, here's me mum coming in the back way. Uh, where's that tea towel? <laughs> Hello, mum. Hello, Jim. What's this, then? Washing up? Yeah, it's nearly finished, ma'am. Just drying the last plate. There we are. That's the lot. Well, thank you very much, son. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. After all, we should help each other as much as we can. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. But I, I thought Susan was going to do the washing up. Oh, uh, she, she helped. Well, I think I should reward my kind little son. Oh, that's what I thought. I mean, um, <laughs> I never thought about it. Here you are, a bar of chocolate. Oh, heck. <laughs> Come. Uh, thanks, Mum. It's just what I wanted. <laughs> Mum, uh, I was just thinking, um, my granddad likes this nut milk. Uh, wouldn't it be better to let him have it? Oh, that is thoughtful of you, Jim. Oh, that's all right, Mum. <laughs> Here's the chocolate. <laughs> That'll be sixpence, you owe me. <laughs> you cheeky young... Now, nah, ma'am, don't lose your temper. You know it gives you hiccups. Oh. <laughs> Just clear off with your chocolate, you greedy boy. You've already had an extra two shillings off me this week. I know that. I wasn't asking you to give me money. I'll tell you what, how about a game of cards? Oh, what are you talking about? I haven't got time to play cards. Oh, we'll make it quick. I'll cut you for one and three eightpence. Uh, go into the living room while I make myself a cup of tea. I'll make it for you. Threaten me to cut. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, you've got your chocolate for washing up. That's it. You, you did wash up, didn't you? Well, uh, I didn't wash. Uh, I dried. What? Eh? How many things did you dry? Well, uh, it's hard to... Um... Oh, here, have your blooming chocolate back. <laughs> well, I've had it. Wait a minute, there's one last hope. A wee loan from the Bank of Scotland. <laughs> oh, hello there, Jimmy. Well, how are things going? Oh, a lot faster than they're coming in. <laughs> hey, will that bloke in the pawn shop take goldfish? Oh, no, don't tell me your pockets are empty again. 
Well, if they're not, I'm wearing somebody else's trousers. <laughs> Jimmy, it's only two days ago you borrowed tomorrow's pocket money. Yes, well, if you could lend me next Saturday's money this Friday and, and my mum lets me have the week after's next Wednesday, I could manage till the following Sunday when I deliver the church magazines if I could... Oh, I'd better leave school and get a job. <laughs> Jimmy... How long do you think you can go on like this? I don't know. I got as far as a fortnight come Sunday and my mind went blank. <laughs> I mean, Jimmy, it's got to stop. Yes, Grandad. In future, you'll have to make your pocket money last a whole week. Yes, Grandad. You can't go on borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. You've got to cut your coat to fit your cloth. Oh, you're right, Grandad. That's what I'll do with my next suit. <laughs> as Shakespeare said, neither a borrower nor a lender be. For loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. Very good. You ought to go in for that acting lot. Scotland's answer to Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm being serious. Yes, and you're quite right, Grandad. Well, I'm glad you agree. I do. Well, uh, if you can just lend me nine bob till the week come Friday. What? Look, I'm not lending you anything. You what? Not a penny. Well, I like that. I'm getting nothing. After I've stood here for five minutes listening to all that guff about Peter and Paul cutting up the coats. I'll give you guff. What's all the argument about? It's this little money-mad son of yours. Oh, Father, you haven't lent him any money, have you? Who are you kidding? He just stood there spouting Shakespeare. <laughs> Shylock in a kilt. What? <laughs> now you've gone too far, my lad. Then leave it to me, Father. Don't you upset yourself. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Grandad. Oh, you're right, Pat, and I'm going out. If I stay here, I, I, I might have something out to say. Yeah, might lend me the nine, Bob. <laughs> what was that? I say it's all over nine, Bob. I'm sorry, Mum. Now, you listen to me. Oh, the, the, the door, man. Someone's banging on the door with a bell. I mean, I... I know, I heard well, it. Well, shall I go and answer it? No, I'll go. You stay here. I haven't finished with you yet. Uh, yes, Mum. I, I was afraid you hadn't. Oh, hello, Alfie. Come in. Oh, damn, Mr. Cleary, oh. Ooh, what a rush I've had. I got off work early, so I had Mr. Crowden around to the bus stop just as one was coming in, and a poor old lady was standing there looking right helpless, so I lifted her on as the bus set off. She clouted with, with her umbrella because she'd just got off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, is your Susan coming out to play? Pardon? I mean, is, is Susan ready to come out? She's upstairs, Alfie. Look, you go into the room. I'll pop up and tell her that you're here. Well, part of you anyway. Hello, Alfie. Uh, you're just the fella I've been waiting for. Oh, am I? Yes. Now, you know I always get me pocket money on a Saturday. You're getting out of me. <laughs> Alfie. You've had half a crown this week and that's your lot. I don't care if you sit in the front room all evening watching me and Susan. Did I ask you for anything? No, but, but I well, thought... Well, don't be so clever then. <laughs> but I'm sorry. What, what do you want then? Can you lend me nine, Bob? <laughs> I've just told you. You're only kidding. I was going to say that our Susan reckons you're very clever, but I don't think so. No, oh, yeah, well, I'm too clever for you. Oh, are you? Would you like to prove it? How do you mean? A little bet. I'll try you out with a simple test. A test? What test? I'll bet you nine, Bob, you can't say the same thing every time I ask you a question. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm, I'm not betting any nine, Bob. All right, we'll start with a tanner and work up. I'll bet you sixpence that if I ask you six questions, you can't say... A frog to everyone. Well, just say, a frog to every question. Yeah, that's it. For a tanner. Right. I'll teach you to bet. Here, put your tanner on top of mine, here. Right, there it is. Now, from now on, you have to say, a frog to every question I ask. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. That's a tanner I've won. <laughs> you didn't say a frog. You <laughs> Little cheek, we haven't started. Of course we had. I said from now on, didn't I? Yeah, all right. But well, here's another tanner. Right, from now on. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <A> frog. <laughs> you were ready for me that time, weren't you? I was that. Oh. <laughs> Winning. Yeah, all right, for another bob. Now, that's two shillings or nothing. You won't catch me this time. Six questions starting now. Are you ready? A frog. <laughs> I didn't catch you there, did I? Yeah. 
A frog. <laughs> what, what did you have for breakfast? A frog. <laughs> You're a funny fella. Who was your father? A frog. <laughs> Ask who your mother was. <laughs> what does our Susan look like? A frog. Ooh, I'll tell her she'll murder you. Last question coming up. Which would you rather have? A frog or this shilling? A frog. Right, I'll have the shilling. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim, listen to this story in Susan's magazine. <coughs> Reginald lifted his head and looked at me. His dark eyes burned into me and I felt a warm glow creep slowly up my whole body. <laughs> Was this love? No, he's set your trousers on fire. <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> A lot of rubbish. Hey, hey, listen. Finally, Reginald spoke. Its voice was husky with emotion. Will you marry me? He whispered. My heart pounded. Time stood still. What should I say? Should I accept him? It all depends, Alfie. How long have you been going out with Reginald? <laughs> uh, look, shut up. But aren't these women's magazines stupid? I don't know, girls certainly like some daft things. Mm, that's true, our Susan likes you. I know, you very funny. I like the stuff at the back best. Winifred Potter's problem page. You know, where the girls write up about, um, uh, or, um, uh, how can I lose pounds of fat? And Winifred says, go for a ride every day on a bacon slicer. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that page myself. Hey, let's see what's in this week. Hey, 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 wait a minute. What's that girl got on? The withy look in lingery. Hey, what's lingery? It means part, get a thing, get a nick, um, undy, um... <laughs> Never mind. Hey, knee length in warm brushed nylon. Duck egg blue, trimmed with wispy lace. <laughs> Cleverly boned out the waist to keep you firm but free. Hey, what is it? <laughs> Look, it's nothing for you. Hey, I should hope not. I'd look a right Charlie turning out for the football team in one of them. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you, you shouldn't be interested in girls but when they get to answer the phone. Uh, all right, hey, you're blushing. I am not. Yes, you are, like a beetroot. <laughs> Just like you were when me granddad walked in the front room and you said you'd switch the light off so you could show Susan how you watch lit up in the door. <laughs> Oh, go and answer the phone and keep your mouth shut. How shall I talk through me nose? <laughs> All right, I'm going. Mm, well, hurry up, clever monkey. Yeah, it might be the zoo saying they've got a cage for you. Yeah, well, there, be, there will be one spare now you've escaped. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello, is that Clear the Rose? Clear the Rose what? House. House. Bingo. <laughs> Just wait till I check your card. Oh, it's troublemaker, is it? This is Mr. Higginbottom. I want to speak to your granddad, but I'll have a word with you first. Oh, hello, Mr. Higginbottom. How's my best friend, Ozzy? He's still broke, waiting for you to pay up. You owe him ten bob, have you got it? Er, uh, yes and no. What do you mean, yes and no? Yes, I owe him ten bob, and no, I haven't got it. <laughs> well, I'll be round in five minutes to collect his sledge, and it'd better be in good nick. If I have to mend that sledge, you'll have to mend your head. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Grandad was right about you being a comedian. He said I was a comedian? Yeah, well, sort of. He said at the pub you made a laughing stock of yourself. You're asking for it, my lad. What's wrong, Mr Higginbottom? Never mind. I'll talk to your granddad about it. Uh, tell him I want to speak to him. Oh, uh, well, he can't speak to you straight away. Can you hang on? Oh, all right. I'll hang on. Have you got plenty of threatening bits? Oh, you won't be home for an hour. <laughs> you stupid little... Look, I'm coming round there now and I'll wait for him. In five minutes, I want that sledge or ten bob. 
Oh, but Mr Higginbottom, I can't get ten bob in five minutes. Too bad. My heart's bleeding for you. I'll have to hang up now while I have a good cry. Hello, hello. You big drip. Yeah, who was on the phone, Jimmy? Fog on, Fred. <laughs> eh? Who's his dad, horrible Higgy? He's coming round for the sledge in five minutes. I'll give him a ride down our roof. Mind you, if uh, I had a few bob more, I could... Not a penny. Your mum told me I mustn't lend you money. I don't want you to lend me money. I want you to give it to me. <laughs> no, I, I haven't to give you any, either. You, you've got to learn what's right, as my dad told me when I was little. Oh, did he? Yeah. He said if everybody could get money given to them for nothing, they wouldn't work. And if nobody worked, the country would be ruined, and then nobody would have any money to give to the ones who hadn't got any to start with who were asking. <laughs> Was it after your dad said that they took him away? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, nothing. Listen, I only need another five bob. I've got five bob here. How did you get that? Well, I won two bob a few. I got some off my granddad's empties. I had four and certain here that Higginbottom wouldn't take, and I got two bob off the vicar. Yeah, don't tell me he fell for that frog trick. <laughs> of course not. He's not as daft as you. As daring as you, I mean. He doesn't like gambling. He told me, Mum, when he was here last Saturday, he said, Gambling is the pastime of the devil. <laughs> then he asked me where my granddad was, and I said, Old Nick's in the front room checking his pools. <laughs> he clouted me with his hymn book. <laughs> I did right. But how did he get two bob off him? There was a mouse in the organ loft, and I got rid of it. He's frightened of mice. Well, you, you killed a mouse in the organ loft? Oh, no, I didn't kill it. I took it back to Aussie, where I got it from. <laughs> Yeah, little villain. Anyway, I'm still five bob short, so if you could just let me have five shillings of next month's pocket money, I'll be able to... You're not getting it, I've told you. Well, um, I'll bet you five bob, then. Uh, if you can say... You're not twisting me again. Well, you think of a bet. Go on, anything you like. I'll toss you for five bob. Heads I win, tells you lose. Come yeah, on. Hey, look, when I bet it'll be on something that's a certainty for me. Hey, just a minute. I'll bet you I can do something that's impossible. I'll bet you ten bob, though. Now, you pay me ten bob if I can... That'll be Higginbottom at the door now. Ooh, he sounds in a bad mood. Yeah, go and make a cup of tea. It might tame the savage beast. Uh, you'd be better off with a whip in the chair. Never mind tea. Yeah, I wish we had some brown ale. Hey, if he chases you, don't shout for me. I'll be running out of the back door. <laughs> don't worry, I'll have... King Kong. Hello, Mr Higginbottom. Nice of you to call. Never mind the guff. Just go get the sledge. Uh, well, uh, come in the living room. Uh, Alfie Hall's just making a cup of tea. In that case, I'll have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> very good. I'll have coffee. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. <laughs> I'll have coffee. All right, all right. Have you got the ten bob? No, but I've got five bob, so I thought that if I gave you that, Ozzy and me could share the sledge. You know, have it for six months each. I'll have it in the winter and he can have it in the summer. <laughs> oh, very clever, yes. Look, I'm not interested in any of your schemes. I know you too well. Well, I know you. At least I know something about you. About your underpants. <laughs> My underpants? Yeah. Now, listen, you young hooligan. It's true. I know what kind of underpants you wear. <laughs> the duck egg blue with lace round the edges. <laughs> Clear the door. You have about five seconds to live. It's no use shouting. I'll bet you my five bob that your underpants are duck egg blue with lace round the edges. That does it. Now, just a minute. Just a minute. I'm going to hit you where it'll hurt you most, in your pocket. I'll bet you five bob. Now, get your money on that table. I will. There's my five bob. Now, get your trousers off and prove it. Right. Here goes. Right. I think it must be off your rocker. I want a witness for this. Alfie, come here, quick. Bring your witness. Ah, oh, there you are. My underpants are plain, ordinary white. That's my money. Yeah, what is it? I was just putting the deal. Oh, no. Oh, at your little twister. Twister? <laughs> he's twisted himself this time. And it's cost him five bob. You mean it's cost me ten bob? What are you on about? He bet me five bob I had blue underpants. Ah, uh, yes, but I bet Alfie ten bob that when you came in within two minutes, I'd have your trousers off. Oh. <laughs>
Those involved with the Clitheroe kit this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, and Tony Melody as Mr Higginbottom. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. and I kept the sledge. So yesterday I took it up Daisy Hill for a trial run. <laughs> and that's when I found out why Ozzy sold it. It was rotten. <laughs> I pushed off, ran, jumped on, and the sledge split straight in two. One half went left, one half went right, and my trousers went west. <laughs> All the way down Daisy Hill on me sit-upon. <laughs> and the daftest thing is, it's give me a cold in me head. We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... The Best of Indian Look. Honestly, sometimes I feel to ashamed to own him. He's been a real badden today. You're right, Mother, and I hope he gets spanked for it. He deserves it. Grandad, whatever have you been up to? <laughs> you can cut that out, you young hooligan, bringing that bunch of delinquents into the house. Bunch of delinquents? <laughs> They're all right, the Black Hand Gang. Three very nice lads. I know, because I'm one of them. <laughs> Black Hand Gang. From the look of this floor, they should be called the Black Feet Gang. It's like a pigsty. Well, you should feel at home, Porky. <laughs> now, that'll do, Jimmy. Just look at it. Dirty feet marks everywhere. Couldn't you have used a door mat? We did, Grandad, but that doesn't get all the mud off. You still get some stuck between your studs. Studs? Yeah, on your football boots. You mean you tramped all over this house wearing your football boots? Well, what else could we wear? The cricket season doesn't start till June. I'll have none of your lip, my lad. And from now on, you'll bring nobody into this house without permission. Do you understand? Oh, look, I'm sorry, Grandad. Honest. Another thing. When you went out with the gang, you left the house empty. And I arrived home later to find the back door wide open. I know, and your big mouth's been wide open ever since. <laughs> now, that'll do, Jimmy. Go on, answer that door. Yes, ma'am. And remember what I told you about not bringing people in here. I'll remember, Grandad. I'll show them. From now on, nobody gets in here without permission. Not even the vicar. Unless he puts a tamer in my collection. <laughs> yes? Oh, it's you, Dennis the Menace. Oh, very funny, Mr Higginbottom. <laughs> Who thought of that daft joke? Ozzy the Dozy? <laughs> All right. Is your Grandad in? Yes, he's in. Good. Well? No, I'm not well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> no better for being kept out here. Out of my way. Just a minute. I can't let you come in here. Hey, oh, I want to see your granddad. Have you an appointment? Shut up and get out of my way. What's the idea? My granddad says you can't come in here without his permission. Oh, does he? What's up with him? Is he mad at me because I made him buy his own ale for once? <laughs> Oh, it's you, Higgy. What's the trouble? According to this brat here, I can't come in this house without your permission. Oh, I didn't mean Higginbottom, Jimmy. Oh, I see. You only meant my pals, who you called delinquents. Of course I did. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr Higginbottom. It's not you who's not wanted here. It's your Aussie. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, will you stop that? shouting about. Oh, it's this cheeky son of yours, twisting my words round and causing trouble. Oh, no. I shall warn you again, Jimmy. Well, Mother, we'd better be going if we want to catch the shops open. All right, you are, Susan. I'm warning you, Jimmy. Just you behave yourself. Yes, ma'am. Any messages for Daft Alfie if he calls Scraggy uh, Susan? <laughs> if he comes while I'm out, just ask him to wait till I get back. That's all. Sorry, Alfie, but that's what Susan said. You've to wait till she gets back. Yeah, but surely she didn't say I've got to wait out here in the cold, drafty doorstep. I'm sorry, Alfie, but I've had my orders. You've got to have me granddad's permission. Well, I'll ask him myself. Where is he? He's out. 
Well, where's your man? She's out as well. I'm in, so you'll have to ask me. And the fee's only a shilling. No. <laughs> Get out of my way, you little pest. Yeah, I mean, no move for your daft jokes after the day I've had. Nothing's gone right for me. Well, come in the living room and tell your Uncle Jimmy. Well, it all started last night when I decided to warm a pie up for my supper and set me alarm clock for seven, but I must have been half asleep when I did it, because this morning the alarm clock never woke me, and when I came downstairs, I found the stove on number seven and the alarm clock inside it on the top shelf. <laughs> Where was the pie ticking away on your bedside table? <laughs> no, I remember I'd eaten it cold, but then I was late for work, so I dashed out without having any breakfast, and halfway there I began to think something was missing, and but then I realised what it was. Your brain? Yeah, no... <laughs> No, me keys, and it was my turn today to unlock the boss's office for the cleaners. Anyway, I dashed back home for a quick search round, but I couldn't find them. And I arrived at work an hour late to find I left them behind at work last night. The boss left me a note with them. <laughs> what did it say? Can't tell you, you're not old enough. <laughs> yeah, but it's gone on like that all day, just one calamity after another. Yes, Alfie, and now you're waiting to see your dear Susan. Yeah, that's right. The biggest calamity of the lot. That's right. <laughs> I'll thump you in a minute. No, just sit down while I go and answer the door. Oh, all right, then. I wonder who I've not got to let in this time. Our yep. greetings and salams, Mrs. Dave. Oh, same to you, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? I, I, am, I am Ranjit Sabu Hakim Mustafa Singh. Oh, well, when you've got to sing, you've got to sing. <laughs> If I am enjoying this most melody, but I am not having very much time. Good morning, good evening. Good night. <laughs> uh, please, little sahib, I am not understanding myself very well. In this country, I am very strange. Oh, you'd be a bit of a puzzle anywhere. <laughs> What's the suitcase for? I am staying at the City Road Lodging House. I am an Indian peddler. Well, get on your bike and pedal off. <laughs> Please, little one, do not be talking so cruel to poor Ranjit. I am not selling anything for a week all day long, and I'm tramping around so much and getting no money that I am fainting with hungriness. My feet are letting in the water, and it is so long since I'm opening my suitcase. I am forgetting what my wares are looking like. Oh, well, you poor old thing. What are you selling? Lucky charms. <laughs> Please, please, you would like to buy one? Bring you all good luck and good health and millions of pounds. How much? Two bob. Threepence. One and sixpence. A shilling. Ninepence. One and threepence. Sixpence. One and nine. Threepence. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I am coming down the wrong way up. You're not very good at it, are you? How many Lucky Charms have you sold? Uh, this week, I'm only selling one. But last week, I am selling two times as many. I am persuading myself to buy one. Well, if business keeps booking up like this, in a month you'll be able to retire. <laughs> to the workhouse. Please, there are two things I am needing most urgent. Customers for my charms and food for my beltum. Oh, you poor old peddler. Look, I'll fix you up with some grub. Oh, I'm thanking you once a thousand times. But first, I've got an idea. I'll get you some customers for your lucky charms. Ah, oh, if you would be doing that, it would be wonderful. Maybe you will find customers easily. After all, my charms are not expensive. Only two bobs. Uh, three bobs. Three bobs? Yes, Two bobs for you, one bobs for me. Very well, anything you are saying. But first, may I have the food, please? My tummy is starting to do most rumblings. Right, come through to the kitchen here. Hey, you've been a long time. Who was it at the... Ooh, who's that? <laughs> hey, is it an Indian? No, it's me granddad sleepwalking in his night. <laughs> He's Ranji, a poor hungry Indian peddler. Tell him who you are, Alfie. Me? Yeah, I'm Alfie, all. But I, I don't live here. But I do live here, means the same time. But I come from Oldham, really, and I, I've come to see Susan because I'm her boyfriend. She's Jimmy's brother. He's her sister. Gov. <laughs> ah, uh, you know what I mean. Please, Mr. Hall, this Oldham you say you are coming from? Yeah. In which country is it? <laughs> You can't understand the way he talks. 
Yes, well, it's had us licked a few times. <laughs> it is most baffling. And now, little sahib, the food you are promising. Oh, yes, go in the kitchen. You'll find plenty of food in the fridge. Oh, thank you very much. You are saving me from starving, and I'm most ungrateful. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you can't let him come in the house like this, g giving him food and all. Your mum will go mad. She won't. If you don't tell her? Yeah, but, but I ought to do. I mean, after all, you don't know what he's up to. He's a, he's a, he's a foreigner. He is a very nice Indian peddler who is selling lucky charms. <laughs> and he's having most bad time on his feet all working. <laughs> Just because people like you are not buying him. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry if he's having a rough time of it, but... but, uh, but uh, it's easy to talk, but money talks louder. Buy one of his lucky charms. It might be just what you need after all the bad luck you've had today. Oh, that makes sense, I suppose. Uh, how much are they? Oh, um, 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 you have got some money on you. Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, oh, oh, I've only four, Bob. Well, what a coincidence. <laughs> That's exactly how much the charms cost. I'll uh, go and tell Ranji the good news before I take him out. Well, where are you going with him? To get some more mugs, uh, customers, for him. Why? Well, I thought if you were stopping in, you could give Susan a message. You know, no, on second thoughts, I'll surprise her. If she's not back in a few minutes, I'll go and do me a run. Right, Alfie, I'll get your lucky charm off, Ranji. Now to take Ranji out and make lots and lots of bobs. Ah, there you are, my little friend. I'm just finishing the food, and I am feeling much like going out and selling my charms. Good, I've made one sale for you already. And I've just thought where to take you to make another sale. Good, good, where is that? Round to my pal Ozzy's to see his mum. You see, Mrs. Higginbottom will buy any sort of rubbish. Uh, sorry, Ranji. <laughs> That's when she has the money. She spends most of it going to the bingo. Ah, the bingo. I'm knowing about that. On its own, two little ducks. <laughs> Doctor's orders, unlucky for some. <laughs> Line O, top of the pops. <laughs> Come on, I'll take you round to their place now while the old ape man's at the pub. The ape man? Yeah, her husband, horrible Higginbottom. <laughs> Look, I've got an idea. Tell Mrs. Higginbottom your charms are very good for gamblers and they could help her to win at bingo. Good, good. Let us be on our way to meet this Mrs. Piggybottom and sell her a charm. And it is very kind indeed for you to be letting me sell you my charms and being so nice about it, the most beautiful lady. It has been the most happy to do business with you. Thank you for giving me the pleasure. You're welcome. Call again any time. Okay, we will. Cheerio, Mrs. Higginbottom. Tatty bye, Jimmy. Jimmy, what is this tatty bye? Oh, uh, Ken Dodd says it and she's a fan of his. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it, she looks a bit like him as well. Well, I'm most delighted with you, Jimmy. We are doing most excellent deal with her. Yeah, that was a brainwave on my part. Flogging her two charms instead of one. Well, indeed, you are most crafty, little sahib. What did she buy them for again? Ah, yes, one for the bingo and the other for her widowing mother to find her new husband. Yeah, and she is giving you the six bobs, so please may I have my two bobs admission. Oh, but of course, you are... And now let us be going to visit the other customers you are mentioning. Right, let's cross the road here. The vicarage is just round the corner. Is that you, Clitheroe? Oh, heck, it's Mr. Higginbottom. <laughs> Hello, what's this? Who's your mate with a deep suntan? <laughs> Allow me to produce myself. I am Ranjit. My name is Ranjit Sabu Hakim Mustafa Singh, and I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Ape Man. <laughs> What was that? It's a, a special Indian word. <laughs> you wouldn't understand it. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I was out in this country during the war, you know. Oh, I speak a bit of the lingo. Uh, listen, uh, Dobie Waller, Chotapeg, Cup of Yard, Hyderabad. <laughs> you were right about the pub, Jimmy. This man has indeed been drinking. <laughs> All right, Pedro. <laughs> That's enough of that. What are you doing round here? I have just been calling to see your most wondrous and beautiful wife. <laughs> oh, my Lizzie, beautiful. <laughs> Don't you get free specs in India? <laughs> what do you mean to see her for? My friend Jimmy is taking me to her and I am showing her my charms. You what? <laughs> Suitcase. 
Don't tell me she's been wasting my hard-earned money on lucky Indian charms made in Birmingham. Please, it is not wasting. My charm will make the goddess of good fortune smile sweetly upon you. Get away. <laughs> I wonder if it would work on the barmaid at the Rosen Crown. <laughs> Mr Higginbottom. I was only joking. Uh, did you want one, Mr Higginbottom? They are very good, very powerful. It will protect you from evil spirits and bad beer. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'd have three of them protect me from my mother-in-law. Oh, yes, my granddad said the other day he was sorry for you. He said you were that henpecked, it's a wonder you haven't got foul pest. <laughs> You're off again, aren't you? You cheeky young twerp. Go on, get lost. Oh, but Mr Higginbottom, don't you want to look at your arm? Yes, I'll give it to you to wake you up. But I'm not asleep. I haven't hit you yet. <laughs> Business makes you hungry. I'm home, ma'am. Get the fatty calf on the table. Stop shouting, you little hooligan. I was shouting me, ma'am. When I want you, I'll blow a dog whistle. <laughs> you are cheeky. What did I ever do to deserve a brother like you? Nothing. You were just lucky. <laughs> anyway, where's me, ma'am? I want me tea. Me stomach thinks me mouth's gone on strike. Mother and granddad aren't back yet. They shouldn't be long. But don't worry, I'm making the tea. Oh, in that case, I will worry. What are you spoiling for us tonight? Shut up and put that tablecloth on the table. Oh, if you're cooking, I'll save time and put the tablecloth straight over the dustbin. <laughs> that does it. Ah! <laughs> you hear me, you big, rotten, scraggy... I'll smack you again if you don't keep quiet. You big boy, you smack me face. <laughs> now I'll have to wash it clean. <laughs> Shut up, you little monster. Oh, no, what's happened now? You two at it again, are you? It's him. It's her. He's a little nuisance. She's a big bully. She smacked me for nothing. I did not. Don't tell lies. You did smack me. I know I smacked you. See, Mum, she's lying. <laughs> I didn't smack you for nothing. You mean somebody paid you? <laughs> Will you stop it? Let's have some peace and quiet. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother, but this... It's too late to say you're sorry. Go on, clout her, ma'am. I'll clout you if you don't keep quiet. What? Me? All I did was ask what was for tea and Scraggy Neck did or not. That will do. Now sit down and keep quiet till we have our tea. What is for tea, Susan? Oh, don't when you ask that, Grandad. Jimmy, <laughs> well, I've done some fish and I don't know what you're having for the sweet. Well, I told you I'll put pie and cream. Oh, I know, but I couldn't find the pie. Well, it's in the fridge with a jug of cream. Well, it isn't. I looked. Oh, Susan. Of course it is. Let me see. Now then, that, that's funny. It was on the front there. <laughs> I told you. The dish is there, but no pie, and the cream jug is empty. What's this then, Pat? Well, the pie and the cream, it's gone. Oh, like the Indian. Pardon? Uh, in the oven. Uh, is it in the oven? <laughs> Of course not. Somebody's had it, Jimmy. Jimmy. Don't look at me. I haven't touched it. Well, if you haven't had it, it must be somewhere. Pies just don't vanish and a half a pint of cream can't walk away. No, not unless it's still in the cow. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's something else gone. The compact. What? A compact, you know, for powder. Alfie and I bought it for Mary Thompson's 21st birthday. I put it on the shelf there this morning. I was taking it to be engraved tonight. We've had a thief in here. Was it valuable, Susan? It cost five pounds. The back was real silver. Uh, maybe it wasn't a thief who got the pie. Maybe it was the dog next door but one. <laughs> He's always hungry. What? A dog walks in, opens the fridge, has a pie and jug of cream and puts the jug back. Oh, he is clever. He can, he can work on his hind legs and, and uh, remember that dog Grandad saw at the pub drinking a saucer of beer. Well, that's different from drinking a jug of cream. Well, maybe this dog's a teetotaler. <laughs> and I suppose he took the compact as well. Well, dogs have got shiny noses. <laughs> Hey, 
Now, now then, look, before we go in, I, I, I still don't understand why you've dragged me over here. To find Ranji, the blooming thief. Oh, I can't believe it. He looks so honest. How much did he steal? Five blinking pounds worth. Five pounds? You heck. Come on, open up. Hey, it's not a very nice area, this, is it? I mean, this house looks as though it hasn't been cleaned since it was built. It's a lodging house, not Buckingham Palace. <laughs> well, they're probably a bit rough here, all, you know, all foreigners, so you better let me do the talking. Oh, you mean they'll think you're a foreigner like them? Yeah. No. No, they'll think I'm a man. Oh, are you going to disguise your voice, then? <laughs> yes, what can I do for you? Eee! That's clever, Alfie. <laughs> now, do James Stewart. <laughs> it was him, you fool. Oh, oh, come on, what is it? Do you want a room? But yes, please. But, well, not want one. We want to find one with a man in it. An Indian, uh, Ranji. He, he told us it was here. But he was. L living, is he? Well, he was breathing the last time I saw him. <laughs> uh, Ranji, the lucky charm merchant, so he recommended you to do. But yes, but no, that, that is... Uh... He told us he lodged here, so we wanted... Leave it to me, Jimmy. We don't want to confuse him. <laughs> Good yeah. <laughs> hey, now look, I know what to say. What? If somebody said good morning to you, you'd be stuck for an answer. <laughs> How many rooms do you want? We want the one that Ranji lives in. Oh, no, no, that's a single. You have to be on your own. A double or a single each for you and the lad. I live at home. Oh, well, you mean you just want a room for yourself, mister? Well, I got one on the first floor. See, there's no cooking in the rooms, no visitors after 12. It's 14 and a tenner a day, and I have no dogs here. Well, not many dogs can afford 14 and a tenner a day. <laughs> I don't want a room. Oh, you've changed your mind, have you? Well, that'll be a dollar. You what? Well, if you book a room and then cancel it, the charge is a dollar. It's a good job I kept quiet, I'll fear I might have confused him. <laughs> Come on, hand over the dollar before I fetch me son. Yeah, get no five bob off me, fetch your son. Hey, strangler, I want you a minute. <laughs> yes, Dad. What is it, Dad? <laughs> He's a wrestler, Strangler Wilson. <laughs> Is there something wrong, Dad? He's <laughs> <laughs> uh... It's this geezer here, he owes me five bob. Yeah, but, 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 but I've, 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 I've got no silver. <laughs> Here's a ten bob note, keep the chain. <laughs> you know what? That's all right, I'll keep it, I'll keep the change. Yeah. You, you, you go back and practice with your piano. Yeah. Does he play all right, the piano? Dad. Hey? Does he play the piano? No, he, he does exercises with it. <laughs> Instead of lifting weights, he uses the piano. Go, mister, can we go in and see Ranji? Yeah, if you like, it's the first room on your right there. Oh, thanks, sir. Come on, Alfie. Uh, and if you decide to stay, let me know. I'll be in the kitchen. <laughs> Making the poison pancakes. <laughs> in here, Alfie. Hello there, young Jim Stive. Oh, he's in. Hey, we want you, Ranji. What is it? Have you been getting to me a new mug for my mascot? Oh, no, it is Alfie of the Twisted Tongue. He is the mug I am having before. Yeah, I look, I may be a mug, but I'm not a thief like you anyway. Thief? I am not any thief. I am not liking what your mouth is thinking. <laughs> Wait till you hear what his feet are saying. <laughs> not Ram shall let you in our house and give you some food. For that I am saying thank you a thousand times sisters are honouring you. Mm, what's that mean? He's bringing all his family round for supper. <laughs> hey, listen, manji, ranty, ganji, banji. <laughs> we want that five quid you stole from their house. What? You tell me I steal five quid? Me? I would never bring disgrace on my family, or I would become untouchable. You son of a monkey's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it, Alfie. I think he's going to 
to do the Indian rope trick with your wind pipe. <laughs> look, I'm not scared. Now, look, Ramji Pandy, you're coming to the police station with us. Now, get outside and get on my motorbike. Well, I'm doing it most willing. Now, when we get to the policeman station, I'm giving you for arresting. You have inflamed my character. My family are most honorables. Never have we had a thief in all our historical. Alfie, there's a copper waving you to stop. Well, it's a woman copper, but she's got her hand up. Well, maybe she wants to go. Go. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. Yes, yes, stop, and I will have you arresting her. What do you think you are, sir? A circus act? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't see you. Well, I did, but I didn't know you were a copper without any trousers on. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean your skirt. I, I didn't know you were a woman. A, a police lady, I mean. Are you drunk? No, just daft. <laughs> we were going to the police station with Ramji here, but now you can take him in. I think I shall be taking somebody to the station. Ah, but we haven't told you what he's done yet. I'm talking about you. Oh, thank you, most beautiful bringer of the Lord. I am hearing about your policemen are wonderful, and now I am finding a blue lady who is the same as the men. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, take no notice, lady. Just lock him up. Y yes, he's a thief. Th that's why we were bringing him to the cop shop. The station, I mean. A thief? Who, this uh, Indian gentleman? Do not believe him. His teeth are lying in his mouth. I have never <laughs> seen him. <laughs> never. I am a poor, honest trading man selling my lucky charms. Never have I pinched anyone. Oh, will you shut your Taj Mahal for a minute? <laughs> now, now, listen, officer, Mrs. Lady... But... That this bloke went to Jimmy's house to get some food and then robbed him when he wasn't there. J Jimmy, I mean, wasn't there, not robbed it. He did that. I did not do no such nothing. I would not bite the hands that fed my face. Just a minute. You're both talking absolute nonsense. Yeah, he's an Indian, Alfie. What's your excuse? <laughs> Listen, lady, I took him in our house, old curry chops here, and when I was out of the room, he pinched a silver compact worth five pounds. That's right. He, he went and... Hey, you mean he robbed the jeweler's shop as well? Yeah, he... What jeweler's shop? The Barker's. We're out at the compact, have it engraved. What? <laughs> you took the compact? From our kitchen? Yeah. Well, that's what I was talking about when I didn't tell you because I was going to surprise Susan. Oh, you dope. And you've been accusing poor old Ramsey of pinching it. Well, I thought he did... Hey, you said he took it. Well, five pounds, I mean. So you are the pinching thief. And you accuse me to throw mud in the eyes of the police, madam. You are not deserving to be in our country. <laughs> you are not fit for human consumption. I'm, I'm sorry, Ranji, and I'm sorry for wasting your time, lady. No, my time isn't wasted. I stopped you before I heard about this stealing business. Yeah, why did you stop him? Because it is an offence to have two pillion passengers on a motorcycle. Can I see your license and insurance, please, sir? Well, hello, my mate. You are good, heck. Well, Alfie, it looks as though you're going to give Susan two surprises. One when she picks up the compact and the other when she shows it to you on visiting day. <laughs> Before the couple lady puts the handcuffs on your feet, would you like to buy another luggage arm? <laughs> Those involved with the killer kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Ball, and Diana Day as Susan, with Brian Truman, Tony Melody, and Rosalie Williams. The recorded program, which was the last in the present series, was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. After all, she just gave him a warning to leave the country. <laughs> Still, we're all friends again now, even me and Susan. Yes, yeah, Susan and me are talking. <laughs> Naughty words, but we're talking. <laughs> that reminds me, I won't be talking to you for a while now, because this is the last of our stories for the time being. Anyhow, I hope we can get together again in the autumn, so until then, enjoy yourselves. Ta-da! <laughs>